hello welcome back and of course irene moses from this episode we're going to start building some projects using tailwind css so these are the projects we're going to be building we're going to start with this simple hero section and we're going to be using the tailwind flex for this and then we move to this we're also going to use flex for this this is a single product page as you can see right here and then from that we move to this we're going to use the grid for this the tailwind grid for this and we're going to be able to create this position relative and absolute um sales badge right here with this lovely layout and then we're going to proceed to learn something more complex we're going to be able to build a kind of featured blog section right here and then we're going to proceed to build this um product category listings and um, finally we're going to build a portfolio website using the win css and as you can see this is interactive and one thing about all the projects is that everything is mobile responsive without any further ado let's get right into it so we are going to be starting with this one this first one so i can just go ahead to close all these guys i'm going to start with this and um, i'm going to install the tailwind css using the tailwind cli again i've done this before that should be episode 15 but just to go over it again, I'm going to do it again. So to get started, I'm going to come to my um, file manager right here. I'm going to go to where I want to create my installation folder. I'm just going to put mine in this folder right here that I already created right here. So I'm just going to create a new folder and call it, uh, let's say, episode 17. And I'm going to call this CLI. Or let me just call it episode 17 and call this Hero, Hero section. Something like this. And then I'm going to open my VS Code. I'm going to drag this Hero section folder only into this place. And um, we have this. That's all I need to do. So one, what you want to do next is you want to come here to terminal and you want to open your terminal right here as you can see this is the terminal right here another way to do is you can i think you can go to view and you can open the terminal right here let's assume you have one terminal running you can just use terminal here, but you can just come to view and select terminal and your terminal will be up so the first code we are going to run is going to be npm y in it so we're going to use that one to create our package the json file so this is what we're going to use to create our script instead of writing our code our code all over and all over again to run and to build our tailwind we just write our script here and then use npm run so that is that about that and um to follow along you can just go to the tailwind documentation website right here click on doc and um we have the tailwind seller right here so the next code we're running is npm install and um, i'm going to copy this code I'm going to come here to paste it and this is going to install tailwind css for us so i'm going to click on enter for you to do this you need to be connected to the internet you need to have an active internet connection so wait for that to install and while that is loading i'm going to come back right here and um, this one is going to create our tailwind config.js file for us so i'm going to copy the second line of code come back right here and um, let's wait for that to finish up so now that that is done you can go ahead to paste the second line of code as you can see this first one installed um um the nodes needed for tailwind css for us we have it right here so this one is going to install the tailwind config.js so that will be npx tailwind css in it we we'll click on enter and that should install the tailwind config.js for us we have it right here this is the tailwind config.js and then after that we need to um, specify the part of our website so the way i want this to be is i want to create a folder for this i want there to be a build folder the build folder is going to contain our css is going to contain our index.html um, or index whatever and every other js is going to be inside that is the best way to do it because when you are moving your website from development to deployment the only thing you need is the build actually so i'm just going to 
come right here to this now this this right here um the thing with config.js so the, i'm going to specify the part of my build so that is going to we're going to open the um quote the double quote right here and we're going to start with a dot slash we want all our project to be inside a build folder everything will be inside the build folder and then inside the build folder locate everything that is index.html like this so it's as simple as that if you come here what they did is they they check the source um folder they have a source folder and then they, they check all the folders that contains index.html or the js and also locate any file with index.html or index.js but because we're going to be using just one file and the file is going to be inside the build folder that's why i'm leaving like this i did mean i'm going to have other folder inside the build folder i can have something like check the build folder and all folder containing index.html well i'm just going to leave it like this it's as simple as that so i'm going to close this and we're going to come back right here to continue our installation i'm going to copy this guy i'm going to copy this i'm going to come here and i'm going to create an input dot css and i'm going to paste these guys don't forget if you have any error go ahead to install the post css plugin post css language support just install it and the error is going to disappear so we have this now that we have that we're going to continue i'm going to come here and i'm going to copy this code this is going to be used to build our output css so let's come back right here to our package adjacent instead of putting the entire code here and put it here so i can always reuse them so the first code we need to build to, to use is the build this will create the file part for our project so to the npx our input is in the root folder so we just, we're just going to get rid of this we have our um, input in the root folder so we have to get rid of that and then our output is going to be inside a build folder inside a build folder and then find create another folder that is css and um, give it a name of style.css so now that we have this i'm going to put a comma right here and i'm going to create another one which is going to be watch and this one i'm going to copy all this code up to this place i'm going to paste it here and i'm going to remove the watch here i'm going to save it so the first one is used to build the parts of our output style and also to specify the part of our input style while the watch is going to be used to um, compile our, our our project from the input from index.html wherever we're using it to the output so it will constantly watch our project so it's as simple as that so the first thing we're going to do to run this now instead of pasting this entire code here to be easy to use npm run build and this is going to build our project first so let's go ahead to do that so we have the npm run build so as you can see a new folder has been added here we have a build folder and then we have another folder inside it that is index that is css and inside the css folder we have the style.css so right inside this build folder i'm going to create a file and i'm going to call it index.html like this and i'm going to create my boilerplate i'm just going to call this hero section just like that and then i'm going to link to this guy to the css and for that it is located in since they are both inside the same folder as you can see the css folder and the index.html um, file they're both inside the build folder so you can give this let's say you, you locate the css and we have the style of css right there so it's as simple as that i'm going to save and now that we have that the next thing we want to do is we want to start watching our project we want to constantly monitor our project as we write our code so you can go ahead to do npm run watch and that is going to constantly watch the project for us so if i should come here to save i'm going to notice this is going to run 
this is going to run and um, to keep monitoring the project as you can see so let's go ahead to confirm if our Tailwind CSS is working I'm just going to come here I'm going to create a div or a paragraph I'm going to give it a class of text green let's say text green 500 and um, this is a test from what I'm seeing so far it look like it is working I'm going to right click to open with live server and um, right here we have it and this is working fine so I'm just going to come back right here to get rid of this like that and you can go ahead to just close the terminal or just come to view you can open your terminal with this you can come to view and open your terminal like this and you can also come to view and close the terminal the shortcut is right here control and the backward um stitch so you can just come here and just do that and it's going to disappear so let's go ahead to inspect what we're going to be doing the only two food i need is the files i need is the index.html and the impute.css so i'm going to save that i'm going to come back right here and let's inspect what we have right here so we have a mother container and inside it we have two div so that means we're going to have a div to contain both of them and then we're going to have another div for this another div for this then we're going to have maybe um a paragraph and heading and the button so let me just inspect to see what is happening there so there's something they call mobile responsive uh, mobile force mobile force design so mobile force design is you designing your website or creating your website first for mobile then adapt it to desktop so that is exactly what we're going to do i'm just going to come here and i'm going to select the iphone 12 pro so to have that so we're going to have the first div which is going to be the entire container i'm going to have another div for the text and we're going to have another div for the image just like this something like that and then you can just come right here to write a comment it's always good to write comments when you are writing your code so we have the euro container and then right here you have the euro text and right here we have the euro image so right inside the euro text we have a paragraph and then we have a heading you can give it something like h1 and then we have a button so let's go ahead to copy the text so we have elementor plus wordpress you can come here you can do something like that elementor plus wordpress and here we have expand your wordpress abilities so you can do something like expand expand your wordpress abilities and then for the button we have get started so right here we have get started i'm just going to save that and um, let's see what we have here we have everything right here so for the image we need to get it as well so in case you don't know how to get the image i'm going to leave a link in the description below to download the source code so you can always get the image right there so i'm just going to close out of that I'm going to right click on this and i'm going to click on save image i'm going to save it directly inside my project folder i'm going to come to hd docs teaching sq wordpress bootcamp doing css and that should be hero section episode 17 and um i'm going to put it inside my build so i'm going to create a new folder right here inside my build i'm going to call this images and inside the images folder i'm going to save this guy so if i come here to my vs code inside my build folder there's a new folder images and we have this so i'm just going to rename i'm going to rename it to hero image hero img so we have that and um so school i'm just going to close that and close the image so i can come back to my index.html and right here i can put my image image right here so we have img so i'm going to put source it's going to be inside the images slash hero dot hero image dot png let me save that and um we have it right here it's as simple as that 
so the next thing we need to work on you notice this color is unique i don't think this color is in um we have this color already made in doing css but i'm just going to show you how you can create your custom color so i'm just going to come here to pick the color first i'm going to come here and um, i'm going to pick this color as you can see we have the color here i'm going to copy i'm going to copy that i'm going to come back to my vs code and i'm going to come to my tailwind.config.js so this time around i want to extend the colors available in tailwind css i don't want to i, I don't want to customize the team so i'm just going to come to extend and here we're going to put something like color colors we're going to put uh um your colon right there i'm going to open your curly braces and i want to give this color a name let's give it something like um let's say something like um hero wine let me call it hero wine and i'm going to come here we're going to paste the, show, the color code right there we have hero wine and i'm going to create another one if i should come here you notice there's another color right here so i'm going to select my color picker and i'm going to pick this color as well i'm going to copy it i'm going to come here and um, i'm going to create another extension of the colors i'm going to call this hero um light hero light wine or anything so you can just come here do that as well and paste i'm going to save this and uh, let's see if this is working i'm going to come right here to this div since that is a mother container i'm going to give it a class and i'm going to give it something like bg hero should already be seen it's coming up so we have bg hero wine something like that and it is working as you can see we have our color right here so that is working perfectly so i'm just going to remove that just to test it to make sure everything's working fine i'm just going to save and now we've configured our color now let's look at the font and um, i'm going to select my what font right here i have um, all these things are plugins on on google chrome so you can just select this guy and you are, you are going to be able to pick the colors the fonts used here so here we have dm sans and we have the crimson text so we have dm sans and crimson crimson text and these are all google fonts so i'm going to come to crimson text google fonts and we have it right here i'm going to open this in another tab now in case for those of you that don't know fonts there's what we call that there are majorly three types of fonts we have the serif we have the sans and we have the mono so there are some that are sans serif and so on and so, so forth but we have the mono the sans and the serif so serif are always the ones with all these um extended till so those with the, the ones they call serif classified as serif are the one with extended till so for now let me just remove all this from here if you don't know how to open that just click on this if you have anything there remove everything so if i should come right here and select the ones i need i'm going to select the 400 and i'm going to select i think i need it for just the 700 not the, i don't need the four i don't think i need the 400 let's see I think we only need it in one place but let's assume you are building an actual project you want to select everything in case you might need it so i'm just going to select the 700 bold and if i come here you notice this is a serif this is not a sans serif so now that we've done that i'm going to copy this code right here i'm going to copy the code i'm going to come to my html i'm going to paste the line of code right here i'm just going to separate them here so that you can see what is going on so we have this and um now that we've done that i'm going to come back right here as well or before i do anything else let me add that to the configuration i'm going to come here and this time around i want to customize the existing tailwind fonts i'm going to come here i'm going to put something like font family i'm going to put my colon i'm going to open my color braces and i want to customize the serif how to change the serif and uh, we're going to create something like a bracket and uh, i'm going to come here i'm going to copy this guy description text and serif i'm going to copy i'm going to come back right here and i'm going to paste i'm going to delete the um 
semicolon at the end and um, i'm going to put a single quote around this guy like this i notice there's a red underline here so you need to add a comma right here to separate the extend and this so now that we've done that i need to add a comma here as well because i want to change the sans as well so i'm going to put sans and for the sans i think we are using something like um that should be dm sans i'm going to come here to search for dm sans i'm just going to close this let's locate the dm sans let me just search for it right here dm sans google font and i'm going to select this and um, let's see let's see what we need i think we only need it right here and here and i think 600 should be enough to do that i'm just going to come here to the dm sans and i'm going to remove anything we have there and i'm going to select the 600 so let's see there's no 600 i think we'll stop at 500 so i'm just going to add the 500 and the only code you need is um let's see is this one right here this one right here that's the only code you need i'm going to copy it i'm going to copy and now that you've copied it come back right here to your index.html and paste it i'll just put it below um the second the second font right here so this one right here just i think i'm looking for okay this is right here just put it below it like this and save so i'm going to come back right here again and i'm going to copy this code I'm going to come back to my tailwind.config.js and i'm going to paste so i'm just going to Put a comma here as well and get rid of this guy and this guy so we are cool i'm just going to save now whenever we use any font but whenever we reference the serif or the sans it is going to change for us once we do other stuff we can start to customize the, the mono as well but we're not going to be using the mono for this project so we are done with that i'm just going to close this and let's come back to our index.html so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to come to the uh, mother container. So let me just come here and let's go ahead to inspect this back. Cool. And uh, we're going to do the same for this as well. Cool. So we can see what we're doing um, live. So this is cool. So now that we have this, um, I'm going to come back right here. And first you notice the background color right here is wine. I'm just going to come here and I'm going to do class and I'm going to do BG hero wine. That was the, that, that was our own custom wine color that we used. I'm going to save that. I should come here. We're not seeing any wine color, color, but we're meant to see a wine color right there. So let's come here and let's reload. I think we need to reopen this guy with open with live server. Yeah. So I'm just going to inspect. Cool. let's close this guy and we have this one so now that we have that the remaining text this text they are all white so let's go ahead to make them white starting with this one first i'm going to come here and we're going to do something like um class let's start with the um the font so we're going to do font this is a font sans and um after the font sans this is going to be a text white and um font let's do font um bold fonts i think we did fonts was it font bold or fonts medium let's do fonts medium that'll be 500 and that was exactly what we added as you can see right here we added 500 that's the only thing we added 500 and um let's just save and let's see what we have right there and this guy is not changing so let me just be reloading right here and we have the white right here so after we've done that the next thing we want to do is if you come back right here you notice this is capitalized uppercase i mean so we need to add uppercase and um 
let's add the size so we can do something like text i think 18 pixels should be enough or 16 pixels let's do text base which is 16 pixels i'm going to save come here reload this and i think we have something very similar to this and i think that is even too large so text let's use text sm that'll be 14 pixels i'm going to come here and i'm going to reload i think this is very similar to what we have right there so the next one to work on is the second heading and um, i'm going to come here i'm going to give the class this one will be font this one will be font serif and um, text text white this will be font bold and this will be capitalize capitalize is to capitalize the first letter and this will be text let's say something like text um 2xl that will be 24 pixels let's save and come back right here i think we have this that is not big enough so i'm going to come here to increase this to something like 3xl let's save so let's reload and um, that is not displaying well as well so let's use something like um let's say 5xl and save and um i think i think we have to use 4xl so 4xl i'm going to save and we have this which is very similar to what we have right there so the next thing we want to work on is the get started button so i'm going to come to the get started button and i'm going to give it a class and first the biggie the background color is our hero wine light i think that's the name we gave it i think hero wine light let me check my tailwind config so it's hero light so you have to remember the name you gave your custom colors so that would be hero light hero light of course and um the text is going to be text white and font sans and um uppercase and this should be font medium and text let's say text base let's save and um, we have this so don't forget the color is the wine we gave it so we need to customize the color so we come to the color and we're going to do something like um, text hero like hero wine hero wine we're going to save and we have this as you can see so the next we need to do is let's work on the padding on around this button i'm going to come back right here and um we'll have to remove the text white right here because now we're using text text hero wine our custom color so let's give it a padding so i'm going to give it something like padding let's give it something like px right and left let's give it something like three and py let's give it something like uh two so px is right and left py is top and bottom padding i'm going to come back right here and let's reload and our button has disappeared so let me just remove this guy from here let's troubleshoot what is going on so something is not right so okay cool i'm going to control z and um something is not right somewhere so let me just remove this guy let's see if let's see if the button is going to come back and still the button is not here so we have our oh we've deleted the background hero lights the background color you light mistakenly deleted it and um let me paste the padding back i'm gonna save that and now we have this which is similar to what we have right there as you can see so the next thing we want to do now is let's go ahead to customize these guys as you can see we need to customize them right here you notice this there are some padding at the top we have padding at the top we have padding right and left and we have padding to the bottom so what we're going to do is we're going to display this guy as um, flex we're going to flex these guys and also flex them we're going to be able to use the gap property so i'm just going to come here and um, for this one i'm going to come here and 
I'm going to give it a class and I'm going to display flex and we want flex as column and um, I'm just going to save that. The reason why I want to do that is because I want to use the gap property right here. So we can go ahead to do something like gap and if I do something like gap for that's going to give 16 pixel space between all the elements as you can see we have this so the next thing i want to do is as you can see the button is now um overflowing so i'm going to come to the button and we're going to give it another class and that class is going to be with width that means occupy only the available width for the size we have including the paddings which come back right here it has come back to its normal size as you can see we have almost the same space like we have right here so after we've done that we need to work on the container and then we have some padding top padding bottom padding right and left so we're going to come back right here to this to the container the mother container and we're going to do something like px let's try px of um let's try px 5 padding right and left of 5 let's save and that is looking similar i'm just going to come here to increase it to something like p7 px7 that is padding right and left of seven and that will be seven times four don't forget seven times four should be 28 pixels now that we have px of seven the next thing we want to work on is let's work on the pi that is padding top and bottom so for padding top and bottom for the top we can just give it something like uh let's do pt for padding top we can do something like uh something like 10 and pb that is padding button you can do something like 7 as well so let's save come back right here and um, show have some space cool this is looking almost the same thing as this now as you can see so the next thing you want to do is let's give i think there are more space right here that we need to work on and um, let's come here I'm going to reduce this guy to 6 and this should be 6 as well. I'm just going to save and I think this is looking way better. Almost the same thing as what we have here. The only thing we need to work on, we need to fix now is just going to be the um, spacing right here. So as you can see, then we have some padding at the top, some margin at the top I mean. So let's just go ahead to work on that. I'm just going to come here to this. To this guy so we are going to give it some margin to the top we're going to give it margin top of i should go with something like 20 that'll be 20 times 4 that'll be 80 pixels we're going to save and um because we didn't specify which part so we want margin top that'll be empty let's save that and we have this this is already similar to what we have right here so i'm just going to come here to reduce this guy padding top to something like uh Let's give something like six. Let's just make everything six. Let's make everything. Let me just give it a padding of six all around. P6. And uh, let's save. And um, this is looking good. I think we have P6. Padding top and bottom six. And um, we have this. This is going to be empty. This margin top of 20 and um let's come back let me save let's come back right here too okay cool this is looking perfect so just this alone we've gotten this the next thing we want to do is now is what of the responsiveness how responsive is it as you can see right here how responsive it is so let's go ahead to just expand this guy let's leave the mobile responsive mode so let's expand let's expand this guy and before we expand too far don't forget this is a container so let's just display this as flex and it's going to be flex flex column because we are working on mobile so by default this is flex column you're not going to change anything you're not going to notice anything but let's start expanding and let's come here to this one let's leave this and let's expand as well so let's see where the breakpoint happens so from here as you can see we are maintaining the same font but immediately we enter the tab mode let me enter the tab mode as you can see the font size of this guy changed 
so we are going to do that as well so if i should come here and i do responsive uh, or something like breakpoints so responsive design let's say our breakpoint as you can see we have the breakpoint md right here so we're going to change the font size and to do that we're just going to come to the p to the um, h element and we're going to put from md we want the font size we want text to be something like um let's say something like um 6 xl so let's save and um let's reload that and as you can see immediately we entered this zone we have a bigger text that's because we said immediately we cross 760 something 768 the font size should change so if i should come to responsive you see that md is 768 and that was what we did right here responsive md from md only apply this to md and that will be text 6xl so let's continue with this we are going we are going and this guy entered another zone from 1025 so from 1025 let me expand this guy from 1025 want this guy displayed flex so i'm going to come here don't forget by default we set to flex flex call so i'm just going to do something like lg so that should be lg 1025 which come to the responsive you see lg is 1024 so i'm going to come here lg from 1024 pixels i want it to be flex row so let's save come back right here and as you can see this is now row because this is now this is now 124 and we have this as well but one other thing you notice is the padding right and left changed as well so we're going to come here and we're going to do something like lg we're going to do p x and let's give it something like uh let's try 14 and let's save come back right here and i think we have something very similar right here so we have something very similar right here and um let's come here and we're going to increase it to something like 16 i'm going to save Think there's no 16 there's 16 and we have this so let's work on the py as well so for the padding y so let's go with lg py and we can do something like um, let's do something like 16 as well i think 16 works fine i'm gonna do 16 that will be 64 pixels top and bottom and uh, we have this which is kind of similar to what we have here so now that we've done that the next one to do is you notice this is looking small and what i want us to do is i want us to give this guy a fixed width while this is going to flex the remaining spaces so i'm going to come back right here and um for the text and give it a width in lg i'm going to give it a width of 2 over 5 in case you don't know what the 2 over 5 width is if i should come here and i search for width I search for width you're going to see the 2 over 5 right here so 2 over 5 is 40 percent of the entire space available 40 percent of the width so we have that and once this is that the next thing i want to do is i don't want it to shrink and i don't want it to expand i want it to be fixed i'm just going to give this something like uh, let's say flex flex none we make it not to shrink and we make it not to expand so i'm going to come here to the second div i'm going to give it a class and i'm going to do flex auto so it's going to occupy the many spaces so if i should come back right here you notice this has now expanded this is now similar to what we have right there so if i should keep going you notice these guys at the top so if i should expand this one notice this is come to the middle but these guys at the top so to fix that we're going to come here to the um second div right here don't forget we set to flex call so we're going to do something like um items i think item center i'm going to save and this is meant to move oh not item center this should be um justify center 
justify center and um, cool this is going to move it to the center and we have this so this is exactly what we want to achieve and we have this so now this is looking good but the moment i expand further i want as you can see if i should keep expanding here the moment we enter another zone this got bigger so we're going to do that as well if i should come back to my responsive if i should come to responsive design you notice we have the excel right here and it starts from 1 to 8 0 so from 1 to 8 0 we want to increase the size of this text so that will be i think that should be excel so we're going to do excel i want text to be something like let's try 9 excel i'm going to save come back right here and um, that's too much so i'm going to bring it down to something like um, 7 excel I'm going to save it and this is looking similar to what we have right there so this is perfect but another thing you notice again is the spacing you notice the space here is more so i'm just going to come here to the mother container and from excel i want px as 20 that'll be 20 times 4 that'll be 80 pixels or let's try 24 that'll be 96 pixels i'm going to save and I think you should have something very tight like this. And um, let's increase it to something like um, 26. There's no 26. I think there should be 30. There should be 28. 28 is one, one, two pixels. I'm going to save it. And um, I think we have it. This is perfect. So for the padding top and padding bottom. As you can see the padding top and padding bottom of this is quite small so i'm going to do something like excel and uh, for px let's just leave px as 10. i'm going to save uh, py i mean padding top and bottom py as 10. let's save and that has been fixed so if i should come here i want to remove the margin at the top that we gave it for mobile as you can see we gave i think we gave this margin top of 20 so to remove the margin can just come from we, we set to flex rule from lg so from lg we're going to do lg and we're going to set margin top to zero i'm going to save that and boom we just achieved exactly what we have right here it's as simple as abc hello welcome to this episode and in this episode we are going to be building an e-commerce product page so we are going to be building this lovely page and um, first thing first we need to install our Tailwind CSS and as you know like the previous episode where we developed an Eero section we are going to first install our Tailwind CSS using the CLI so let's get into it so first you need to open your VS code your Visual Studio code and open your file manager where you are going to create your folder so i'm going to continue with this folder so this will be episode 18 so right here i'm just going to put episode 18 and i'm going to put something like um products products page like that and i'm going to drag this folder inside my vs code so just like we have before we're also going to install our theme in css and like you know you can come to view and you can open your terminal right here and also you need to be connected to the internet to be able to do what you want to do right here so the first thing i want to do is i'm going to create a package the json file which will be used to pre-build our script so i'm just going to go ahead to do something like npm um, in it and we have this so while that is loading you're going to come right here to tailwind css so just go to tailwindcss.com slash doc slash installation and right here these are the codes we are going to be using to build the website so we're going to come right here to copy the npm install tailwind depend um, npm install the dash d is depend on uh, dependencies and tailwind css so this is going to install tailwind css for us so i'm going to come back right here as you can see this code has installed the package the json file for us so right here i'm just going to paste the next code and this is npm install um, dependencies of the css i'm going to click on enter and um, this should 
install theme in CSS for us. So for some of you, in case you just jump to this project right away, you might not be able to do all these things if you don't have Node.js installed on your computer. So before you be able to do all these things, you need to have Node.js installed on your computer. So I'm going to wait for that to install. As you can see, this installed all the dependencies of Tailwind CSS for us. So we're going to go ahead to run the next code, and that is the npx Tailwind CSS init, and that will install uh, the Tailwind.config.js. So I'm going to paste the code right here. I'm going to click on enter, and then I'm going to come back right here. And the next thing we need to do after doing that is to connect our build project to the dependencies on Tailwind CSS. So I'm going to go ahead to do that. I'm going to come back right here. And as you can see, this has installed the tailwind.config.js for us. So for the part, I'm going to come to the package, um, the JSON right here. This is where we are going to build our script to build the output CSS part. And the tailwind.config.js is where we are going to specify our, um, you know, our index.html, index.javascript, index.ph, whatever you want to do. So we're going to have this and right here, I want my build project to be inside the build folder so we're going to go like this locate the build folder and inside the build folder you're going to see all index.html now you can add multiple rules right here depending on how you want to structure your folder but for mine i'm just going to leave it like this locate the build and my index.html is going to be inside the build folder so I'm just going to save that and I'm going to close this. So I'm going to come back right here and next thing we need to do is we need to create our input.css. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to create the file right here. So I'm just going to call this input.css and I'm going to paste this code right there. I'm going to save it. If you have seen any error, of course, come right here to your um, plugins, extensions and install this extension, post CSS language support install this extension and the error will be gone so we have this and the next thing we want to do is we're going to come right here to create our um, build folder so i'm going to come here and instead of pasting here right um, right here directly i prefer pre-building the script so i'm going to come here i'm going to call this one build build and i'm going to replace the code here with what i just copied from the tailwind website and so i'm going to specify my own part so for the input my input is directly inside the root folder as you can see the input is here so just remove the folder before it and for my build it's going to be inside a build folder and then inside a css folder and inside a style.css style.css so i'm going to copy all this I'm going to copy it and i'm going to copy, create the watch script i'm going to paste and i'm going to call this watch and um all i'm going to do is i'm going to remove the watch from this and this is all we need to do i'm just going to save so the next one to do now is just to build our parts and get things started so i'm going to come here i'm going to do npm run build so this is going to build our um beautiful uh build folder and that is where we're going to place our index.html so as you can see this created a new folder for us we have the build and inside the build we have the css just like we, we specified here and inside the css we have the style.css so right inside the build here i'm going to create a file i'm going to call this index.html and um, inside this place i'm going to create my boilerplate i'm just going to call this product page product page and i'm going to connect this file to the css so i'm going to come here and i'm going to do um link when the link and it's going to be a css and it's inside the css folder and we have the style of css i'm going to save that after doing that i'm going to come back right here and constantly watch my project so i'm going to go ahead to do npm npm run watch and i'm going to click enter and this should constantly monitor our project and also help us compile whatever styling classes we use in our index.html or inside the inputs.css compile it to the style.css so that is all we need to do so now that we're done with that the next thing i want us to do is to set our colors so let me just can just close this and you can close this you don't have to be there so if i come to the 
um, project was trying to build right here you notice this color is kind of unique and the fonts if i check the fonts you notice that using system ui so we need to do all that so first of all let me pick this color i'm going to select my color picker right here and i'm going to pick the color i'm going to copy the color code and i'm going to come back right here i'm going to come to my tailwind.config.js and i want to extend the colors available in tailwind css so right inside this extend i'm going to open this i'm going to type in colors my colon and um curly bracket and right here i'm just going to call this um let's say commerce green or something like that so let me just call this product green product green and i'm going to put my ash i'm going to paste the code so after doing that we are basically done with our customization i'm just going to close the two window.config.js and i think we're good to go so let's just test what's up with this guy i'm just going to create a paragraph i'm going to call this test and right here you can put something like class you can do um bg product let's say text product green and that is working fine definitely i'm going to right click and open with live server and that should open up right here cool as you can see this is giving us the same color we have right here so i'm just going to right click to inspect when you are designing you need to design for mobile first so let's design for mobile first i'm going to come here and this as well i'm going to right click i'm going to inspect or oh, before i do that let me go ahead to save this image i'm just going to save save image and i'm going to save it inside my work project that's my ht docs my training skill right here doing css and um episode 18 and um, inside the build i'm just going to create a folder right here i'm going to call these images and inside the images i'm going to save the guy right there so after doing that i can just go ahead to inspect and we have this so in case you don't have this image the link to download the source of this um, particular episode is in the description below so you can go there download the source and have access to the image as well so i'm just going to come back to my vs code i can get rid of this guy and i'm going to come to the images i'm just going to rename this guy to something like um products it's a product is a webp file i'm just going to close this and i think we are good so let's see what we are building um before i close that off let me come back to this level there's a div right here so we can group these guys into one div then there's another div right here and inside our div we have one two so we're going to have a div a div and all these guys will be inside another big div so let's do that so we're going to have a div we're going to have div for the upper navigation and another div for the lower navigation that's for the products and the, the product image and the text and inside that we're going to have a div for the image and another div for the text so let's go ahead to put some comments so we can call this container and um, right here you can call this the breadcrumb you can call that the breadcrumb and uh, you can call this one products products container and here we have the product image product img and here we have we have the product details so now that we have our comment to be very easy to work and um let's get started so for the first one let me just inspect this since we do mobile first we have this guy we have this breadcrumb right here so for the breadcrumb i think we have we can have a let's say we can have something like um we can have a, a span let's say we have a span we have 
icon we have another span we have icon and we have another span so I'm just, that's what i'm going to do i'm just going to come right here i'm going to open this up and i can give this a span and we're going to have an icon right here definitely we're going to have an icon right here and um, a span and then an icon so the icon i'm going to be using is going to be icon design so i'm going to come to iconify the design and i'm just going to search for Chev chevron so we have this guy i'm going to select that first i'm going to copy the script the cdn script i'm going to copy that i'm going to come back right here to paste it right here and after that i'm just going to come back right here to copy the chevron code so i'm going to come here and i'm going to paste it right here and after that we're going to have another span and let me see what we're doing can close this off we don't do that again so we're going to have another span chevron span so we have another icon and i'm going to have another span so we have that right there so let's go ahead to put in the details so we have home furniture so i'm going to come here i'm going to call this home and this is going to be furniture and um, the last one is going to be let's see let me just come here and copy the text let me select this and i'm going to select the text right here i'm going to copy and i'm going to paste so let me just go ahead to okay let me just leave it like that i'm going to save and um i think we are cool let's come back right here and we have this so the next thing we need to add is going to be the product image so we need to have an img right here we are going to locate our images slash around the product.wp i'm going to save as well and as you can see the image is right there and then we have the content right here so for now i'm just going to close out of this so i can copy the text the way they appear right there and um, product details i believe we have a heading right here we're going to have a heading so i can use something like um, h3 i'm going to have a heading we're going to have let's say a paragraph you can call it a paragraph i'm going to have a paragraph and uh, we're going to have this text and let me just call let me give this something like uh, h4 let me give this an h4 we're going to have an h4 and then we're going to have this text so we are going to have a paragraph you can give this h2 instead so I'm going to have a paragraph and then we're going to have an horizontal rule HR is going to be horizontal rule we're going to have an horizontal rule and then we're going to have a button so we're going to have a button right there so let's copy the text we have this one I'm going to copy I'm going to paste it right there and um, right inside this I believe we have two texts right here so we need to work on that so instead of an H4 let's have another div i'm going to have a div for that and we're going to have let's say um an h3 and then a span we're going to have an h3 and a span so let's copy the first one i'm going to copy this i'm going to put it right into the h3 and i'm going to copy the span the reason i'm doing this is because as you can see this is smaller and it is kind of up so we need to use position relative relative and absolute for that and we have that as well then we are going to have these guys I'm just going to copy and i'm going to paste it right in there or better still let's do it another way let's create a div for this as well let's create a div and I'm just going to put paragraph. I'm going to have two paragraphs. So let me copy them individually, just like this. We we'll have the first paragraph. I'm going to paste. And um, we're going to have the second paragraph inside our DIV as well. I'm going to copy this, copy, and I'm going to create another paragraph. And I'm going to paste to make things very easy. So after that, we're going to have hr and we have the button which is add to cart so i'm going to come to button 
and I'm going to do add to cart. So let's save. And now we can inspect and build for mobile first. So we have this, as I should come here, we have all these guys. So now let's get started. Starting with the mother container, I'm going to come here. This is the mother container. I'm going to give it a class. And first, we want to work on the padding. As you can see, we have some padding right and left, and we have some padding on the top. So I'm just going to do something like PX. Let's use PX6. And PY, let's do PY something like um, 8. I'm going to save that. And um, we should have that right here. Cool. So I believe we have that. So let me just reduce this to P, um, PX5. That'll be 5 times 4. That'll give us 20. And we have this. I believe this is cool. So now let's work on these guys. And um, so I'm going to come here. We have this. So first, I'm going to give this a class. The container responsible for the upper breadcrumb, the breadcrumb right here. So I'm going to set to as flex, and I want it as flex, flex rule. Let's save that. And then we have this. The next thing we want to do is. I'm just going to come right here and I want to do something like um, items center. So let's do items, items center. So those these guys will be aligned to the center. So they are aligned to the center to be themselves. So that was, that's what I want to achieve. And um, the next thing we want to do is let's go ahead to um, customize these guys. I'm just going to come here. I'm going to come to class and it's going to be font sans i'm going to use font sans it's going to be um font let's use font semi bold font semi bold and um let's do something like text we have our product green the color we created from the start and let's do text um xs something like this 12 pixels and want to make everything uppercase so let's just save that and we're going to come back right here and this is not exactly the same thing as what we have right here so i'm going to change this from semi bold to bold and we have this so let me reload this i think we have the same thing right here but i believe this is looking too bold so let's go back to semi boot. I'm going to save. I think I have to be reloading this guy to get. They're looking similar, but not exactly the same thing. They're looking very similar. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it for the remaining guys. I'm going to copy and I'm going to come to span. I'm going to control Z. Let me copy the entire class. Like this, I'm going to copy. I'm going to come to this guy. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to come to this guy, and I'm going to paste it. I'm going to save it, and we have this. So I think this last color is going to be black. So I'm going to do text dark for this. Let's say text black for this one. So I'm going to save and um this is black this is cool so now that we've done that and um, don't forget this div is a container for this div and this div so we can go ahead to display this guy as flex we can do flex and this time around it's going to be flex call flex call i want to give it a gap let's give it a gap of something like um let's try let's try a gap of let's go with six i'm going to save So we have flex here and this is div and this div responds for this div and this div so we want flex call so let's just reload this uh, definitely so we want flex call and i just give it a gap so the gap is visible already i think i have to be reloading this and not trust the um live update so now that we've done that, you know, we don't really have to do anything to the image. But the only thing you notice from the image is we have this guy right here. We have this seal badge right here. So let's come to our image. Don't forget there's a div containing the image. So we need to create a span right here and we need to give it seal. 
and let's style it so for this i'm going to give it a class and i'm going to call this um bg is going to be our product our product green and um after the product in green is going to be text white and after the text white let's give it width the width is going to be fit and um let's go ahead to give it a px padding right and left of something like um two and a py of something like one let's save and let's see what we have right here so we have this so the next thing we want to do is let's go ahead to i think this is looking a little bit darker and this is not that dark but i'm just going to ignore it and um, use it like that i'm just going to come here and um, let's give this guy uppercase i'm going to save and that is uppercase and that's we're going to change the text to text maybe text xs that'll be 12 pixels i'm going to save and we come right here and i notice the text is kind of bold so we're going to do something like text bold font bold instead not text bold so it's going to be font bold i'm going to save and we have this very similar to this and um so i'm going to come here i'm going to put the exclamation mark i'm going to save it and we have this so now that we've done that the next thing we want to do is we want to display it relative to the image don't forget they are both in the same container so we can target this container we can put class i can put something like um relative and uh, right here we can do something like absolute absolute i'm going to save that and um let's reload and this is not absolute so we can move it around so we can just do something like um top let's give something like top um three uh, let's give something like top four uh top that would be four and uh, i want to give it space from the left so we can do left let's give it left four as well i'm going to save come back right here and reload and this is now up so what this means is we displayed this little cell guy as absolute and the container is relative so now we move this we are saying okay give it position space from the top or four space from the right or four i think four should be let's check the pixel that's 16 pixels so that is looking very similar to this and now we have that as simple as a b c so let's go ahead to start this text i should come down right here you notice we have this old guy and um, right here we have that and i'm going to give it a class of fonts i think i didn't give this guy a font so let's come here to give it font sans i think that'll be cool so we're going to come here this is going to be font font sans as well and this is going to be font bold and um, text black and text let's try 2xl text 2xl i'm going to save that and um let's reload that is not as big as what we have here so i'm just going to go ahead to change this guy to something like um 4xl let's save that is too big so i think 3xl is going to work fine let's save i think 3xl is fine i think 3xl is fine and um that is too black so i'm just going to change this to text zinc let's use zinc 900 i'm going to save and boom we have something very similar to that cool so the next one i want to style now is this guy so i'm going to come here to give it a class as well and let's see the styling same thing so i'm just going to come here and i'm just going to do text um let me do zinc and let's go with um 800 let's save that and i'm going to do font let's do font font board and text should be something like text excel and save and right here we're going to have that 
similar to what we have right there and the next we want to do is we want to style this other guy beside it we're going to come right here we're going to do class and we're going to do text zinc and zinc of something like uh, let's try 600 600 and i think we're going to put a line through it so we can do something like um light line through and um font should be bold and this should be text let's use text base that should be 16 pixels i'm going to save and if come back right here i'm going to reload and we have this i think this one is looking a little bit small so that should be um text sm let's save come back right here to see what's up with that I think that is looking very similar to this and i'm going to change the zinc shade to something like um, 500 let's save come back right here to reload this guy and i think this is cool so what i'm going to do is i'm going to target the container and i'm going to do class and i'm going to do something like flex something like that and um i'm going to do instead of doing flex should we use absolute let me see that properly so right here we have this this is looking more like um flex let's use absolute for that so i'm going to change this to relative i'm going to change their container i'm going to change the container to relative and this is going to be absolute 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 i'm going to save that and if i come here and i reload as you can see this is absolute already so what we're going to do is we're going to give this guy some percentage so let's make it occupy let's say like something like um let's say something like 50 percent of the entire width so we can just come here but that's let's just target like that i'm just going to come here i'm going to do top i want zero from the top and the left let's try left of um let's try left of 20 and let's save let's see what that looks like I'm going to come back right here i'm going to reload and that is too far away so let's try left of um, 10. i'm going to save and let's reload and that is too close i'm just going to bring this to something like 14. let's save i'm going to reload and we still need some space let's make it 16. I'm going to save and I'm going to reload it and that is actually very similar to what we have right there so I'm just going to make this guy let's see if there's 17 there's no 17 18 no 18 and 20 there's 20 let's save and let's see what that looks like and that is too far away so let's just make it 14 we can specify our own value so i can open this i think 14 is what 14 is um, 56 pixels so let's make it 60 so we can specify our own value using the arbitrary i'm just going to come here and i'm going to make it let's say 60 pixels i'm going to close this i'm going to save i'm going to reload this guy and let's try to make this guy 65 pixels let's save I think that is good enough i believe and um, let's make this guy 70 pixels i'm going to save i think this is perfect so i'm just going to come here and from the top let's give you something like top let's try top four that'll be four times that is too much so let's try top one so one should be like four pixels i'm going to save and this is looking perfect to what we have right there this is looking perfect so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to come here don't forget this container i think this container is responsible for all these guys and um, this container is responsible for these guys so what i'm going to do is first i'm going to put space between these guys this text or the text so we can just come here and we can give this a class and we can do flex and flex first is going to be column i can give it a gap of something like um let's try a gap of eight i'm going to save that 
and um, we should have some gap right here so cool that is looking too much so i'm just going to reduce the gap to something like um seven let's save i'm going to reload and i think this is perfect this is perfect so the next thing we want to do is let's go ahead to put some space between the image and the text so don't forget this div is responsible for covering all the image and the text so we can come here to give this a class i can do flex and flex call and uh, we can do gap let's go with gap of six or even gap of seven as well so let's see if let's come back right here and boom we have our gap right there similar to what we have right here so let's go to work with the text i'm just going to come to the first paragraph and um let me come to the paragraph right here. i can do class font sans and font should be base and text you can go with text sync and uh, let's say 900 and um let's say text we don't text base font sans and that should be font medium that should be 500 bold i'm going to save that and we have this very similar to what we have right there so this similar and i think um, we can bring this bold down so we can do font let's go right here fonts and uh, we can do font uh, medium is 400 let's do font normal we need to save that should be 400 and cool we have this so all i need to do is i'm just going to copy this class i'm going to copy and also put it in the second paragraph and i'm going to save it and uh, both of them should now look alike so we need some space between those two guys so you can all, always come to this div and you can put the class you can do flex or just do space you can do space y so let's do space y and uh, let's give it something like um seven and let's see so let's just save and we'll come back right here and we we'll see the space right there so i think seven is too much so i'm going to bring this space y is if we don't want to do it without a flex like normal items to put space between normal items either horizontally or vertically so the y and x determines the axis so i'm just going to reduce this to six i'm going to save that and the next thing we have right here is the horizontal rule so i'm just going to come here to the horizontal rule i'm going to give it a class and i'm going to do something like text um products product green and um the width is going to be full so let me just save and let's see what we have right there and um we're not seeing it exactly so let's see i think another thing we can do for this one let me just get rid of this another thing we can do is to use a container you can do a div and do a div and instead we're just going to come here to use border so we can, we can do something like border bottom so border b and we can do border um let's say our product green so this will give it a color so i'm just going to save so i'm um, going to come here and let's and now we have the border right there so we have this and um we can either use a product green or let's just use something like um zinc let's use zinc or something like uh, 300 very light and um let's save and let's see what that will look like and i'm um, seeing the border but not so bright so you can come back right here to make it something like um 600 i'm going to save and we have that is too good let's see what we have here i'm going to make this 400 i'm going to save and let's reload we have it right here let's reload i think this is better compared to what we have here this is better so for the button the next thing we want to do is to work on the button i'm just going to come here and give it a class i'm going to give it text white and bg will be our product 
products green like this and i'm going to come here to see so for the width i'm just going to make the width um let's give it can that give it our own specific width um can do width of let's try width of um let's say the width is half let's use half of the screen that'll give us half of the screen and um let's give it px padding top and bottom let's just give it something like um a five padding right and left i mean let's give something like a 10 and padding top and bottom py let's give it something like a seven and let's see what we have right there we're going to save let's come here and we have this that is too big so we have this but it's too big and um let me just reduce this to come in and close this off so i'm going to come here and i'm just going to reduce this to py is going to be something like um let me give you something like four i'm going to save similar to what we have right there and um, i'm going to quickly work on this guy i'm just going to do something like font sans and font bold and uh, let's save and we have this this is exactly what we have right here and we are done as you can see we are done with this so the next thing we want to work on is let's work on the tablet mode so i'm going to click out of this if i should come here as you can see we still have this and let me click out of this as well so we still have the same thing and if you keep going up the moment it broke is um right right at um around um let me see let's use 125 so we have this and uh, we can break it at around one two five zero so we can come here and i'm going to come to the container for everything and instead of flex call for that that should be lg the break breakpoint is going to be lg and i'm going to do flex row instead i'm going to save come back right here and i believe that should be flex row let's come here so we have this i'm going to reload where did i put the flex row that should be the o not there so i'm just going to cut it that should be on the product on the product container containing both the image and the content so it should be here i'm going to paste it i'm going to save that and boom we have this so how easy is that we have this and what i'm going to do is, as you can see for this one we have some space around it and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to come here and i'm going to do from lg i'm going to do from lg from lg px should be px should be something like um let's say 10 and um, py let me just use p should be 10 all round p should be 10 all round i'm just going to save that let's come here and let's reload and um, that is not getting close at all so i'm going to come right here let me reload this think that is too small so i'm going to change this back to something like um i think 20 i'm going to save it and uh, let's see what we have i'm going to reload this and that is compressing it too much so that is compressing it too much and um i'll need to specify the width so let's come here and um i think i'm going to make the width of this I'm going to give it w and uh, that'll be one over two that should be 50 percent and let's see what we have i'm going to reload and i think we have this so let me try bringing this up and um, i think this is looking good so let's see so i think this should take more space so i'm just going to come back right here and um let's check the width for tailwind css i'm going to come to tailwind css and i'm going to search for width i'm going to click enter and um, for the first one i want it to occupy a certain percentage so this should um, let's see 
so we have 60 40 so i want the image to occupy something like 3 over 5 and the text is going to be something like 2 over 5. so the width of this i think this is in the wrong place i'm going to come here to product and um, i want the width of this let's give it um something like um width the width should be um let's try let's come here let's try 60 percent three over five three over five and the text should be 40 percent so let's give this a width of let's see a width of two over five and let's save so let me see what's up with that and i think this is even better than what we have right here i think this is better so that is basically all we need to do and if i should close out of this we have this and um, this is looking too big so from um let's say from we have let me come to um breakpoint so you can see what i'm you can understand what i'm trying to do so i'm going to come to breakpoint responsive design if i scroll all the way up so what i just did was for lg so i'm going to say for xl i want them to occupy the same um width so i'm going to come here from xl so the width should be should should be 50 percent and that'll be one over five I think two over five should be fifty percent. Let's see that. So let's see one over five. I think there's no one over five. That'll be two over five. Two over five should be fifty percent. And um, I think I'm going to come here as well, and I'm going to Excel, and the width is going to be two over five. So let's save that. And um, we have this. So I think I'm going to change to one over two. That should be one over two. One over two. One over two should be fifty percent, to be precise. So one over two. One over two. I'm going to save that, and we have this. So if I should close out of this, we have exactly the same thing right here. So the only thing that is different right here is you notice the padding right and left of this is small, while the padding right and left of this is looking a little bit too small. So let's work on that. I'm going to come to this um, container, the mother container right here, and I'm going to target the Excel. So from the Excel, I want to give it a padding right and left. That'll be PX, and then padding right and left of something like, let's go with 28. I want to pixels, and um, for Excel as well, I'm going to do PY. That'll be padding top and bottom padding top and bottom of something like um let's go with something like 50 pixels uh something close to 50 pixels is going to be something like 24 and we have that'll be 96 let's go with 14 and that's 50 piece 56 pixel i'm going to save and um i'm going to come back right here and i think we have something very similar to that but for the top and bottom i'm just going to reload this for the top and bottom i think i'm going to increase it to something like 16 and that should give us 64 pixels i'm going to save it and um we have this i think this is looking way better this is looking better and um for this guy i think i'm going to give it padding right and left so i'm going to come to the container for the text and i'm going to do from xl from xl and to give it a px or something like 10. let's save and um, this is looking too broad so let me just come back right here and i'm just going to give it a padding to the right that'll be pr and let's give it pr of something like um let's try 14 that'll be 56 um, pixels i'm just going to save that and i think this is better this is almost the same thing as we have right here almost the same thing so if i should go ahead to inspect we come to this and if i should come down we come to um this if i should keep going we enter the tablet mode and um this has affected the size of this 
so i think we need to reload let me reload that and um, let's see i think something is wrong with the width i'm going to come here and we have excel for the width for this one as well i'm going to come here and um, for the width oh we have width three over five right here so we need to get rid of this the one we put before before using the excel so i'm going to come here as well and i'm going to remove this i'm just going to save that and our code should be working fine so this is perfect and if i should if i should keep going down as you can see this is mobile responsive and for the text i think for mobile i'm going to come down right here i'm going to come down right here to the button for this 50 percent let's start from let's see md i'm going to come back right here from md so anything less than md is going to be full so for the width normal width is going to be um, width of feet and from md the width is going to be 50 percent so for mobile the width is going to be feet i'm going to come back right here and if i should go now i think this is not working perfectly so the moment we go out of medium as you can see the button extended and if you should keep going the button is going to remain big like that and that is all you need to know about this particular project and i'm going to see you in the next episode hello welcome to the third video where we are building project using two wind css in this episode we're going to build featured blog section and this is what we're going to be building right on the screen i'm going to go ahead to build this and we're going to be using the two wind css grid to develop this if i should go ahead to inspect this you notice this is 100 percent mobile responsive as you can see this is mobile responsive and we're not going to be writing any line of css code we'll be using only the tailwind css so to get started what we need to do is you you need to have your vs code up and i'm going to come to my folder right here and i'm going to create a new folder i'm going to call this episode 19 and you can do something like a blog blog section once i have that i'm going to drag the folder right inside my vs code right here and um, the next thing you want to do is you want to install tailwind css using the cli so go to your view and open up your terminal right there as simple as abc so the first thing i want to do is i want to create a package.json file i'm going to go ahead to do npm yes and in it so for you to be able to do all this you need to have node.js installed on your computer if you don't have node.js installed on your computer go online download node.js and install it like every other software like the way you install every other, every other software on your computer so now that we have this the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to come to the tailwind css documentation landing page that is tailwindcss.com slash docs installation and we're going to run through all these codes so first i'm going to copy this this is going to install all the dependencies of tailwind css for us i'm just going to paste npm install dependencies thing with css i'm going to click on enter so we have all the dependencies installed for us right here since so we have the node modules and we have the package lock.json so after doing that i'm just going to come here to copy the next line of, line of code and this is going to install the tailwind config.js for us i'm going to paste i'm going to click on enter and as you can see right here you now have the tailwind.config.js file so after doing that the next thing we want to do is we want to create our file path i'm going to come to tailwind.config.js to the content and what i want to do is all my content all my index.html my images my css everything is going to be inside a build folder so to connect my tailwind css to my project i'm just going to come here and i'm going to make it locate the build folder and inside the build folder locate every file every file that ends with .html if you have js in your project you can go ahead to put 
um, you know, curly bracket over it and right here that's what was done right here so what this is doing is locate the source folder and locate every folder that contains .html or .js and also locate every file that starts that ends with .html or .js so now that we have that right here you can go ahead to save so after saving that the next thing we want to do now is we want to build our project before then let's go ahead to copy this and we're going to create our input.css i'm just going to call this input.css i'm going to paste if you have seen any yellow or red arrow go ahead to install this plugin and uh, post css language support and i'm going to come back right here so now that we have that it's time to build our project so i'm going to come here to copy this code and instead of pasting the code right here and formatting it and installing the project i prefer to pre-build the script and that is why we installed package.json from the start i'm just going to click on that for this one i'm going to call this build and uh, you can give it any name so i'm just going to paste the code i just copied right here and replace this source part don't forget i said i want to install my inside a build folder and no no this is our output our input css so our input css is inside the root folder as you can see this input css is inside the root folder so we don't need a build right here that's the input css then for the output css we need a build folder and i want to call the css file style.css you can name it anything so we have this and um, i'm going to create another script and this is going to be used to watch the project so we're going to come here i'm just going to copy everything we have right here i'm going to copy it i'm going to paste i'm going to delete the watch we have right here. so the first one is going to build our project and the second one is going to watch and compile the project i'm just going to save and um, now that we have that i'm going to come right here and i'm going to do npm run build so this is going to build our project for us so let's see that as you can see right here it has built the project for us so now we fold our build and inside the folder we have the style.css right there so the next thing i want to do is i'm going to create my index.html inside this build folder i'm just going to create a file and just call this index.html and um, i'm going to create my boilerplate and then i'm going to connect to my css so we're going to use link we're going to come to css and the style css is directly inside the root folder if you want to put this style css inside a css folder then right here you need to build it and instead of putting style css out like this you can add css slash and it's going to build it for you and you need to do the same for this as well so but my i just want to keep my simple and just leave it inside the root folder of my build folder so i'm going to come back right here to my let me save this i'm going to come back to index.html and we have that configured i'm going to come here and do blog section now once, I, once we have that i'm just going to save you can close this you can close this so the next thing i want to do now is i want to I want to watch my project so that it can be compiled i'm just going to come here to run npm run watch and while that is loading i'm going to come to my file to download i have some images right here i'm going to cut it you can copy as well and i'm going to come back to my project folder i'm going to come to the blog section that i'm working on inside the build folder i'm going to paste the images folder so now you can see the images folder right here so you can just exit out of this so let's save and um if i should come here let me test if the tailwind css is connected successfully so i can come right here to do something like a p um tag and class can do text text i'm red and 500 so this is working testing this is working and i'm just going to right click open with live server and we should have it open right so our tailwind css is connected successfully and so i'm going to come here to remove this and we can start working 
so let's come back to inspect our project if you should look at this you notice the font here is different we have a different font here this is a serif font and um, we need to first get the font so if i should select my font checker to check the font being used as you can see this is play fear display so we need to get the font up and configure our project i'm going to come here and i'm going to look for um is it play fear or fear play let's see that again so we have play fear display play fear display display fonts i'm going to click enter let's come here i'm just going to save this and uh, it's a google font play fear display i'm going to click on that and uh, right there you want to make sure you don't have anything right here so i'm just going to remove all this close out of this and if i should come back right here i think we need just the board we need the board that's all we need i'm going to come back right here and get the board so we have the board right here i'm just going to go with the semi board and the board so i'm going to add the semi board and i'm also going to select the board so i'm going to select those two i'm going to come back right here this icon i'm going to click on that and i'm going to copy the available link here i'm going to copy the link come back to my index.html and i'm going to paste the link right there i'm going to paste the link right there so let's let's fix this i'm going to paste the link right there let me cross check to make sure the link i copy the link correctly so we have that and i'm just going to save then i'm going to come to my tailwind.config.js to configure this guy and um what, what you are going to do is we're going to change the font this is what they call customization of Tailwind css we're going to change the font so i'm going to come to the team how to change the default value of the font and how to change the sans and uh, sorry we have, we have to create the the customization we want to do so we want to change the font family the colon color bracket then we want to change the sans font and as we want to copy this you come back right here to copy this copy everything right here like that i'm going to copy come back here and i'm going to create a bracket i'm going to paste it and we're going to have these two guys you're going to put a quote single quote around that and i'm going to add a comma and then for the serif for the this should be for the serif not for the sans it should be for the serif and then for the sans for the sans i'm just going to go ahead to let me check what they have right there I should come here and um, I select this for the sans we're using opus sans so i'm going to come here i'm going to remove these two guys like this and um, i'm just going to search for or let me just add it back i'm going to copy 600 and um 700 so let me just search for open sense so i can just copy all the links together uh let's search I'm trying to search right here and we don't have any search right here so i'm just going to come and search for open open sense go fonts right there and i'm going to click on this and um i think what we need is going to be the let's say like 500 let me see let's say like 500 and 400 i'm just going to add the 500 and the 400 then i'm going to come back right here to copy this link everything i'm going to replace what we have right here index dots index dots html i'm going to replace everything cool and um, i'm just going to come here to press my tab so i can adjust the code now you might be wondering what i just do right here so this single um, link is containing the two fonts as you can see if you check here you're going to see open sans 400 500 then you're going to see play play um play fear display 600 700 and then we have the cross origin link right there so now that i've done that i can come right i can save this and i can come back right here to add the sans my bracket and i'm going to come back right here and this time around what we want to copy is the one for the open sans i'm just going to copy up to this point 
copy and um, i'm going to come back right here i'm going to paste and also you want to add single quotes around the sans serif right there and we have this so the next thing you want to do is you need to add a comma here because it is conflicting with the extend uh, functionality i'm just going to add a comma and boom we have that i'm going to save and everything should be working perfectly fine so let's come back right here i can close this and um, just need this so this is our project and if you should look at this you notice we have first a section that's the first div so let's go ahead to create that i'm going to create the div and then inside the div we're going to have let's say two divs uh, one div for this guy the uh, blog and the latest article this is going to be one div and then one div for this blog items and i'm going to come here we have div we have div so this is going to be let me add the comments right here this is going to be blog heading and um this is going to be post item post item list and um after doing that inside the first div we're going to have let's say something like a paragraph and an h2 so i'm going to come here i'm going to have a paragraph a paragraph and h2 so now that we have that inside the second div we're going to have four divs one two three four so i'm going to come here i'm going to have div that's one that's two and that's three and that's four we're going to have four divs and inside each div we're going to have uh the image part we're going to have image then we're going to have all these guys so we'll still come back to do that so let's work on these other guys first i'm going to come here and for the color we're just going to go with the thing with default colors so i'm just going to come back right here and for the model div the main container so let me just add the comments right here section container so for the model div i'm going to give it a class and i'm going to use bg zinc this is default still in css color bg zinc and shade of 900 i'm going to save that and you might not say anything yet because you don't have any content inside here so we have bg zinc 900 and don't forget we are building for mobile first so let me just inspect and let's go to mobile let's build for mobile first that's a good way to build your website i'm going to inspect this as well cool then for this we have our blog and latest articles so i'm going to come right here to the paragraph we have our blog and we have the test articles as you save it come back right here by now you should see something right there so let's customize this guys i'm going to come here I'm going to give the class and this is going to be text text um let's use font font sans and this will be text orange uh, let's go with 600 text orange 600 they want it all uppercase and um font let's go with font let's use font bold let's use let's use font bold or better still let's just use um i think we added the 500 and the 400 let's use medium let's use medium and um font medium and um what else let's just save and let's see what we have right there we can save that and we have this very similar to what we have right there and um let's go ahead to do something like text the text size size now is going to be let's use text base and let's see what that does let's save and uh, nothing has changed i think this is cool and now that we've done that let's work on the second one i'm going to come to class and this will be font serif text white and uh, this one we capitalize that is first letter should be capitalized and this will be font bold 
and uh, this will be text let's go with text um lg that will be 10 pixels let's try text excel up 20 pixels i'm gonna save and we have this not exactly what we have right there but then you can go ahead to do to excel let's save and um go to reload similar to what we have right there so that is cool the next thing i want to do is i'm going to target the div for these guys and i'm going to display them as flex so i'm going to come to class i'm going to do flex and this will be flex call and um flex i think call and i want to move them to the center i want to move them to the center of this guy so i'm just going to come here and we can do something like um let's see items center let's see if so we have it to the center item center and one thing i want us to add right here is we need to add something like text center not compulsory but just add text center in case let's assume your text is long i'm going to show you an example quickly text center and let's see if though you might not say anything but let's assume you have this guy is very long let me copy i'm just paste paste i just want to copy this only this guy cop uh what am i doing now so okay cool i just want to copy that and we'll come to paste 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 and let me get rid of this text center you're going to see what i'm saying if i use save and i come back right here as you can see the text are not to the center anymore that's because the text is now very long though the entire object is to the center but the text is not to the center but if i should add the text um if i should add the text center come back right here as you can see it is now to the center so that's the usefulness of those guys of the text center i'm going to anytime you align um an item to the center and it's a text at least could you put text center except in rare cases where you want to align them to the left or to the right so now that we have that we have items to the center i'm going to save and uh, we have this this is looking good so now that we are done with that the next thing we want to do is let's work on let's start working on the um images the blog items so here we have the post item and we're going to work on the first item i'm going to open that and right inside there we have an image so you can do something like div and the div is going to contain our img and i'm going to look inside my images folder slash one and um, i'm going to save then that's the first div so let me just come here and i'm going to put a comment blog item one so from here to here is blog item one I'm put a comment here end of blog item one so you can understand what is going on so now that i've done that we've done the image part now we have another div right here and this div contains paragraph heading paragraph and let's say a link so you can come here and we can do create another div right here and this is going to contain a paragraph let's say something like h let's use something like um h3 h3 paragraph and a link cool now that we have that we can come back right here and can start working so i'm just going to close out of this so i can copy what we have right here so i'm just going to copy may 24 2022 Going to paste that here may 24 2022 and then for this one okay this is a link i'm just going to copy i'm going to paste it right here and um we have a paragraph to copy i'm going to paste it right here and then we have read more so you can just come here and we just type in read more so for this one um let me just make it all lowercase so we can specify 
the case ourselves and uh, we have this as well let me just leave that one the way it is so one other thing i just noticed is the h3 should be a link so you can just come here to add a link href you're going to add your equals to your codes i'm just going to use a placeholder of ash i'm going to close out of that and um, i'm going to copy this guy or cut it and put it between the link so we have that so i'm going to save and um, nothing much we have all the text right there i'm just going to go ahead to inspect this and uh, we're going to come here and you notice the background color of this guy is different from that of this guy so i'm just going to come here to make things easy i'm going to make this one 800 this will be 800 i'm going to save and i'm going to make the background of this 900 so let's let's go to work so i'm going to come back right here and let's start with this guy let's start with this guy i'm going to come here i'm going to give it a class and um, first i'm going to give it a bg zinc 900 bg zinc 900 and um, another thing i want to do is let's let me see if, so you can see what i just did you can see it right there so i want to give it a padding so i'm going to give it a padding all round of six let's save and we have that we have the padding all round of six i better still you can use seven i'm going to save cool now that we have that let's go ahead to start working on this individual guys i can come right here to the p and um you can come here to do class and first it's going to be font sans it's going to be all uppercase and um text orange orange 600 text orange 600 and um font let's go with some um, fonts medium font medium and um text text base that'll be 16 pixels i'm going to save that and we have this very similar to what we have here okay this is a different color this is kind of bright zinc so we need to do that as well so i'm going to come here so text orange it's going to be text zinc and let's say something like zinc 300 so i'm going to save it let's see what we have that's too bright let's go with zinc 600 i'm going to save it and that is too dim so i'm just going to come here to do zinc 500 let's save let's go with zinc 400 let's save cool then after doing that i'm just going to change this from text base to text sm so text sm should be 14 pixels let's save and it's not as small as that yet so let's go with uh, text xs i'm going to save and cool we have something as small as this so the next thing we want to do is we want to work on the um, heading so we're going to target this guy directly you can target the heading directly or we will target the a tag so i'm just going to target the a tag and i'm going to do class and um, let's come right here I'm going to do class and it's going to be font serif and um, text i think that should be text white and after the text white what else we're going to have capitalize and after capitalizing i'm going to do font bold and fonts um, let's give it the text side not text size text let's go with text um let's do text if this is to excel let's go with text excel i'm going to save it and we have this okay this is looking a bit smaller i'm just going to go with text lg i'm going to save i'm going to come back right here and um, we have that i will ask still let's go with i think that is cool that is cool so the next thing is we're going to have this 
now if you look at this the color of this and this is the same thing so we can just come here to copy the class all the classes right here you can just copy come to this p tag paste it right there and um we have fonts instead of uppercase i'm just going to leave it as default and we have the text we have every other thing i'm going to save and we have that right there but instead of the text xm xs you can do text let's try text biz so it won't be too small we have this i think i'm going to prefer this way and lastly we have the um the link right here so i'm going to do class and it's going to be font sans and it's going to be text orange orange 600 and it's going to be all uppercase it's going to be font font medium font medium and um, i'm going to give it text size of text base that be 16 pixels i'm going to save it and we have our read more button so now that we've done that let's go ahead to give this guy some space and to do that we can just either use um the space y but i prefer using the flex so i'm just going to do display flex flex direction is going to be column and let's give it a gap of something like six i'm going to save and that gap is too much let's go with four i'm going to save and that is looking almost the same as what we have right there so i'm just going to go with three and i'm going to reduce the size of this guy to sm the the tag and i think this is very similar to what we have right there uh let me go a little bit smaller xs i'm going to save and exactly what we have right there so i think this is capitalize capitalize i'm going to save it that is looking too small i'm just going to make this sm i'm going to save and we have this so now that we have that the next thing we want to do is let's go ahead to adjust these guys i'm just going to come to the main container right here the mother container i'm going to come here and let's give it px pad right and left or something like six or even seven and py let's go with 10 i'm going to save it and we have this okay let's just reduce the px to something like four i'm going to save i think this is better this is better so now that we have that the next thing we want to do is we want to give this guy some space don't forget the mother container right here is containing both this first heading and the div responsible for all these guys so we can go ahead and target this and we can just do something like space y we can do space y and we can do let's give it something like a 10 let's save so we have some space right there it's as simple as that so after we've done that the next thing we want to do is we want to copy this blog item right here i'm going to copy the blog item i'm going to copy you can go ahead to delete this one this div is I'm just going to paste so you can do comment um item two blog item two paste you can come here you can do item three you can paste i can come here you can do item four you can paste so I'm just going to come here to change the image so i'm going to this is one we we'll change this to two and this is going to be three and this is going to be four i'm going to save i should come here i'm going to see everything but they are joined together so to separate them i'm just going to come to the main container this is the end of the last item this is the main container as you can see to so all the way to this part so you can give it a class and i'm going to display this one as grid and i'm going to do grid direction to be the grid the column so how many column do you want for mobile that'll be one column 
and then i can use the gap property you can do gap of something like five i'm going to save that and uh, we have some space i'm going to increase the gap to something like eight let's save that so we have let me make the gap six i'm just going to save and we have this and we have this so this is pretty simple we are nearly done for the mobile let me increase this guy to something like seven increase the gap to seven and boom we have that so we are done with this so let's go ahead to check tablet i'm just going to click out of responsive mode and immediately we enter the tablet mode that's around 7 60 something now we have two columns so let's do the same for this as well so immediately we enter 760 something we want it to be two columns so what we're going to do is very simple we're just going to come to the grid course and this time around we're going to do md from md in case you don't know the responsive breakpoint of thing css so i should come here and i come to a search for responsive responsive design as you can see this sm is a mobile and md starts from 768 so from 768 we want to change the grid calls to two that is we want to have two columns i'm going to save that if i should come back right here i should load and we are currently okay cool that should load and we have this so this is exactly the same thing right there and um they should keep going this is still the same thing and right from lg from lg 1024 we now have four columns so let's go up there and we're going to do the same thing we're going to come here i'm going to do from lg we want to have grid calls of four i'm just going to save come back right here and boom we have four right here so it's as simple as that it's as simple as that and that's all you need to do as you can see right here as well and boom we entered the course so what i want to do now is i want to add a padding and to increase the padding for for lg even for md so i can do md i want px as seven like that or let me say eight and uh, let me use seven px as seven and um, py remains ten then for lg i want px as let's go with nine i'm just going to save and that should increase the space to the right and left and we have this as you can see this is looking good so come down enter the mobile mode and this is looking perfect as well and uh, come up we have this so if i should click out of this we have this so what i want to do is for this for L, um anything larger than lg from xl i want to increase the padding right and left and padding top and bottom i'm just going to come here and i'm going to do for xl i want px as i want px as something like um around 100 pixels so let's go with um 24 that's 96 let's go with 28 cool that's px then for py xl for xl i want py um that is padding top and bottom are uh, something like let's go with 20 i'm just going to save that and um, boom we have this uh, let's just close out of this and we have this as well it's as simple as a b c as you can see right here we just created what we have right here this place if i should inspect we have this and if i should come down we have this and we have this and we have this so that's all you need to do and we just made it mobile responsive using the grid another thing you can do is let's assume you want to give space right here you can either make these guys flex if i should come all the way up this is the heading kind of they haven't flex already you can just go ahead to give it a gap you can give gap i can do gap or something like four going to save that and as you can see there's some space right there now and i'm just going to reduce the gap to something like three i'm going to save and we have this 
it's as simple as that so that is all about this project this is where i'm going to wrap up this video tutorial and i'm going to see you in the next project hello welcome to this project and in this particular episode we are going to be building this featured product section using the tailwind css so to get started first you need to open your vs code and i'm going to come right here to my htdocs you can use any folder parts i just like organizing my stuff so i'm going to come here and um, i'm going to create a new folder i'm going to call this episode 20 and this is going to be featured product featured product and we have this so after doing that i'm going to select the episode 20 i'm going to drag and drop it inside my vs code right there so to open your terminal just come to view and click on terminal and one thing i love doing of course for so for those of you that already know about the tailwind css project is i like using the package.json um, script builder so i'm going to do npx i'm going to do npm and uh, y yes and then i'm going to do init so this is going to get the package.json file for us as you can see we have it right here this is what we're going to use to pre-build our script and after doing that you need to come to the tailwind css.com slash docs slash installation and you need to follow the codes here so i'm just going to copy this npm install dependencies still with css this is going to install all the node dependencies of the css so i'm going to come back right here and i'm going to paste this i'm going to click enter and while that is loading i'm going to come back to this part and i'm going to copy this and this is going to install the tailwind.config.js file for us so i'm going to come here and we're going to wait for this to complete so now that we have the tailwind dependencies installed you can paste the second code which is npx tailwind css init and this will install the tailwind.config.js for us i'm going to click enter and um, the next thing we need to do is to connect our project with our build so i'm just going to come back to vs code we have the tailwind.config.js installed and we need to specify the part of our project i'm going to click enter I double quote and first i want all my projects my index.html my css and my images inside one folder and i'm going to call that folder build so i'm going to do build and locate every file with that ends with dot html so this is going to connect i'm going to save that and after doing that the next thing we need to do is we need to create our input.css file to come here I'm going to create a file i'm going to call this input.css i'm going to paste the code i'm going to save it if you have seen any error just install the post css language support plugin on vs code i'm going to come back right here and next we want to do is we want to build our projects let's come here i'm going to come to my um package.json and i'm going to create two new scripts the first one is going to be build I'm going to paste the code I just copied. I'm going to add a comma and right here, you're going to add your double quote. And this is going to be npx tailwind css install. That is input, not install. This is the input. This is going to be my input. This is going to be my output. I have the input. And my input is directly in the root folder, which is input.css. So I'm just going to remove this, remove the folder before it because it is directly here and my output is going to be inside a build folder and then inside a css folder and i want the css file to be style style.css so i'm going to copy all this code i'm going to copy I'm going to comment paste and you're going to call this one watch then i'm going to remove the watch right here for the build so i'm going to save once we have that you can come right here and can run npm run build and this is going to build our project for us so let's wait for that to load as you can see this created a build folder for us and inside the build folder we have the css folder and the style.css so inside the build folder i'm going to click on the build i'm going to create a new file and i'm going to call this index.html just like that and inside the index.html i'm going to create a boilerplate and i'm going to call this um let's see featured products 
featured products and i'm going to connect my css so my css is going to be link css and inside the css folder and the style of css i'm going to save that and the next code you want to run is going to be npm run watch and this is going to watch our project so now that we have that let's get started with the actual building of the project so you can just close your terminal right there and i'm going to come back here to what we're building and first you notice the color is kind of unique so i'm going to select my color picker this is my chrome color picker i'm going to select the chrome color picker and i'm going to select the green i'm going to copy the color code and after copying the code i'm going to come back to my vs code locate my tailwind config.js and i want to add a custom color so i'm going to extend my tailwind and i'm going to call these colors i'm going to add my colon my curly bracket and i'm going to call the color let's say product product green let me call it product green and then i'm going to create a double code i'm going to paste it and right in front of it you want to add your ash and that's all we need to do i'm just going to click on save and the color is going to be added so to check if that is working fine you can just come here to create a p tag and give it a text color of product green and of course it's working fine so i just get rid of this and i'm going to save and our project is set to go so i'm going to come here let's analyze the design we have right here so first we're going to have a div to contain everything and then we're going to have another div for this upper part and another div for all these products then each product is going to be one div one div one div one div so let's get into work so i'm just going to come back to my vs code i'm going to create the container i'm going to leave a quote right here um main container i'm going to come here i'm going to create a div and inside the div we are going to have two div I'm going to have to div so i'm going to come here like that and um this one is going to be this is going to be the header and this is going to be the product container product mean container and inside the header part if i should come here you're going to see that we have a heading and a button so i'm going to come back here we're going to have maybe something like an h3 and the text is new arrivals new arrivals and we're going to have a button and the button is view all view all and then for this we're going to have a div and the first div is going to be the product so we're going to definitely going to come back to customize that but let me just put a placeholder so we're going to have let's say an image but if you look at the image you notice there's an absolute element right so we're going to create a div that that is going to accommodate both the image and the absolute element so inside the div we're going to have a div and then we're going to have img we're going to come to source it's going to be my image img i am yet to put the folder right here but i'm going to do that so let me just do that first i'm going to come to my downloads i have the folder prepared there you can find the link to download it in the description below i'm going to cut it i'm going to come back here to episode 20 then build i'm going to paste the folder and we we'll close this so you can come here now let's do and do this and i'm going to select let's say one and also we're going to have a span and what do we have inside the text we have something like sale so you can come here so this place i'm going to leave a comment and this is going to be product product item one and this will be end of product item one definitely so this is going to contain the image and the absolute element then underneath that don't forget this this is the main container this is the product item that is taking each product then we have this for the so our element is going to come underneath it so we're going to have another heading right here you can give this something like an h4 
but let's use h3 right here i'm going to use an h3 and here i'm going to use an h2 right here so h3 right here i can call this salon chair salon chair and um, underneath it we are going to have i'm going to have another div just like that and this div is going to take two items so we're going to have this and this so we can come back right here and we can use h3 better still we can use span so i can just use two span I can use do the four span and um, we have 79.90 so we have 79.90 and uh, we can do another span and you can do 80.10 80.10 another thing you can do is you can change this to maybe like a paragraph and this is going to be a span i'm just going to leave put as span so now that we have this let's go ahead to start customizing i'm just going to save i'm going to right click i'm going to open with live server and this should open right here we have this so i'm just going to go ahead to inspect it and mobile mode because definitely you want to build for mobile first and then we're going to adapt it to the desktop so i'm going to do the same for this i'm going to inspect and we have this so first thing first is you notice the error of padding around it so let's work on the padding first so i'm going to come to the main container right here i'm going to give it a class and i'm going to give it something like px that is padding right and left px or something like um let's try let's try 10 and um, py of something like 14 i'm going to save that and boom we have this so now that we have that let's start with this upper part i'm going to come here to class and if you check this this is this is a flex item this is as you can see there this is a flex item and i'm just going to come here to set to flex and it's going to be flex call for mobile and i want it to i want items to the center i'm going to save come back right here and our items are now to the center so now that we have that we can now go ahead to style so i'm just going to give this a gap we can go with a gap of seven i'm going to save that we have this gap and that is looking that is looking good so let's start um, customizing this guy. I'm just going to come to the H2. I'm going to give it a class and we're going to start with font sans and font. Let's say font bold and text. I think that should be text black or something. So we have text black. And we have text. Um, let's go with um, two Excel. So I'm going to save it let's come here we have this and i'm just going to make it 3xl 3xl and we're going to make it first letter uppercase i'm going to save that uh, not uppercase now let's go with um capitalize i mean capitalize first letter is going to be capitalized i'm going to come here we have this so this is too bold so i'm going to change this from bold to semi bold I'm going to save and this is looking very similar but i'm just going to keep it the way it is so now that we have this um the next thing we want to work on is let's work on the button but as still let me change this guy to mono let me try the font mono i'm going to save as you can see this is the mono but not the same thing so let's just go back to the sans can also use the serif just so you know there are three categories you can also use the serif if i save that and now we have the serif so i'm just going to come back right here to sans i'm going to save that and we have the sans i'm just going to leave it the way it is or oh, better let me just change this back to bold save and boom i want it this way this is perfect for me so let's work on the button i'm going to come to the button i'm going to give it a class font sans font let's see normal font normal and uppercase 
text white and um, text this i'm just going to save and uh, in case you don't know font size is the font font normal is the width uppercase is make all the text uppercase the color and text base is going to be the size 16 pixels so i should come back right here go oh, the text is meant to be black so i'm going to come here to text black let's save that and we have this not close to what we have right there but manageable so i'm just going to do something about it i can come right here and do text lg and this should be 18 pixels you can save that and this is better so you can either use for this you can either use a border or um you can either use a border or use an outline so you can do outline so you can do outline let's go with outline one and let's see what that is so you can do outline one that's the outline width and um outline let's go with um outline green our uh, green our uh, product green color product green i was going to save that and i should, should see something right here you should see the border right here so we're not seeing anything yet if i should come back right here we have outline okay we are yet to add the outline so i'm just going to do outline so you have to add outline the outline width and then the outline color i'm just going to save that i can also use border i'm just going to save that we have this so you can just go ahead to change the outline width to something like two so that's like two pixels i'm going to save that and um, let's see what we have here that's almost the same thing with what we have right there but i think we're going to go with black color for this i'm just going to make it black i'm going to save and we have that so the next thing i want to do is work on the padding so you can go ahead to make it give it a padding i'm just going to give it px let's go with 10 or px let's go with um let's go with five and py i'm going to go with two i'm just going to save that similar to what we have right there as you can see i better still for this one i'm just going to come to px padding right and left is cool but py you can make it 1.5 going to save that so this is very similar i'm just going to come here to increase this guy to something like uh, seven you can save that and this is perfect they can play around with the color and the outline to get what you want i'm going to save i think but that was just for this and this is outline so i'm just going to leave it at two i'm going to use zinc so i'm going to use zinc i'm going to go with zinc 800 let's save take so i'm cool with the color right there i'm cool with what i have right here so the next thing you want to do is don't forget this container is holding this container and this container so you can display this as flex and uh, flex is going to be column right there and you can give it a gap of let's go with gap of um 10 as well i'm going to save it and cool push it down so i'm just going to increase this guy to let's increase this guy back to two and save it cool so now that we have this let's go ahead to customize the product so the image is looking cool right away like that so the next thing we want to do is i'm just going to come right here let's start this young man i'm going to come here give the class and it's going to be bg product product green text white text xs that's 12 pixels font sans upper case font semi bold that will be 600 600 width so let's save and um, we have it 
right there so what we're going to do is i'm going to come here i'm going to give it px add right and label let me just give it a p all round or something like a two let's see what that looks like and that is looking too big so i'm just going to make px two and um py top and bottom is going to be one i'm going to save that and this is looking cool for me i think i'm just going to increase this guy to 1.5 can save and this is looking better so don't forget this container is responsible for this too so i can go ahead to display this as relative relative and this one is going to be absolute absolute if i should save it see the content is going to stick to that is not absolute so what we'll do is i'm going to give it top let's give it top of let's give some space at the top of something like um let's try four and um from the left let's do four as well so four times four is 16 pixels that'll be 16 pixel space from the top of the container and 16 pixel from the left of the container if i come here we have this solid very similar to what we have right there so this is cool the next thing i want to do is let's work on this guys and i'm just going to copy the the styling we gave this so let's come here and for the editing i can just copy the class some of the same thing i'm going to copy this come here and i'm going to paste so this time around it's going to be text to exhale and capitalize let's save it and we have that so for the size i think i'm going to bring this down to exhale let's save okay this is looking cool so you can go a little bit down to lg try lg let's save so this is looking good and then we have these guys so let's customize those i'm going to come here i'm going to give it a class I think we've displayed it as pan already okay we have that pan already so the only thing left is just to play with these guys i'm going to give it a class and fonts it's going to be sans it's going to be text let's go with a zinc color we're going to go with a zinc color so i'm going to come here i'm going to do something like zinc uh let's go with the 700 let's go with zinc 700 or zinc let's just go with zinc 700 and text base that will be 16 pixels fonts semi bold i'm going to save it come back here we have this i think we can play with that guy a little bit one two i'm just going to leave it the way it is and i think that's all i need to do i'm going to come to this one and i'm going to give the class font sans as well text zinc and this time around let's go with 500 and text xs font semi bold as well and this time around we're going to do line true so this is going to strike through it and um, come here you can see we have that so we can go ahead to reduce text zinc it's meant to be zinc i'm going to save and um, we have that that is looking very similar to what we have right there so i'm going to target the div responsible for both of them i'm going to give it a class i'm going to set as flex flex column and um items items I want item to the center i'm going to save and um we need to add an essay item center i'm going to save it and now we have this guy so i'm trying to see what's up with this let's make this a p tag let's make this a p tag i'm going to save it and um, we have this so this guy is meant to come to the middle the heading and um, i'm coming let me i have to put these three guys in another div to put in another div so that's where i'm going to add this flex class so let me remove this 
I'm going to save it and I'm going to bring this guy back to spawn. So I'm going to come right above here. I'm going to create a div and this is going to contain all these guys because both of them have to be moved to the middle as you can see both of them have to be to the middle and I'm going to come here I'm just going to cut it I'm going to come here I'm going to paste so you can select to bring this guy you can select this guy and just move it out press your tab so you can just leave a comment here so you know what this is you can do something like product product name and price so this is the div i'm going to target i'm going to come here i'm going to give the class it's going to be flex flex call for mobile and um, items center you can save that and boom we have it to the center the next thing i want to do is we need to give it some gap as you can see so i can come here and i can give it a gap of let's go with three i'm going to save and um, boom we have that so after doing that don't forget that this container and this container are both inside this product container so we can go ahead to give this a class set as flex and um, can go ahead to do something like flex call i can give it a gap of um, something like um, let's go with five i'm going to save and let's see and we have the gap so this is looking good and i'm going to come back right here so now that we have the gap i think okay there's an error here so let me just get rid of this make sure you don't make these kinds of errors i'm just going to remove that i'm going to save i'm going to come back right here and definitely everything is looking good i'm going to come back here and um, since we have this image we have an image here and we have a text here we need to display this our uh, item right here this flex item right here as um items center i'm going to save it you might not see what that does but if i should remove this and i save if i should come to tablet as you can see our text is to the center and this guy is not to the center so to fix that we're going to add we're going to add the item center i'm going to save it and the image and everything is going to be to the center so i'm going to go back to inspect now that we have that we can go ahead to duplicate this entire guy into four places i'm just going to copy paste paste and paste so this is going to be four item four item um three item two and one so if i open my images as you can see we have tool one so let's come here we have tool one we have um, tool we have chair two so i'm just going to change this to chair i'm just going to change the name so we have chair two i'm just going to remove this guy and um chair two we have stool four and five i'm just going to change this to four i think there's one more so i'm going to change this to five so let's save and let's see what we have so far and um, now we have all these guys so the next thing i want to do now is don't forget this is a container for each product and all the four products are inside one big container right here this is the product main container so you can go ahead to give it a class and we can set this guy as a grid and for mobile i want it as grid calls that is one just one column i'm gonna give it a gap or something like eight i'm going to save that and boom we have this guy i can go ahead to increase the gap to something like 10 if you want to I'm just going to save and this is looking good so now what of for tablet as you can see for tablet that is two um gap two columns so we're going to do the same i'm just going to click out of this but as it is showing um one so first let's work on this upper part the heading as you can see we have the header right here and it's set to flex flex call and item center gap seven. so for medium size from medium size from medium size i mean we're going to set to flex row and we're going to do justify from medium as well we're going to do justify between i'm going to save it come back right here 
and let's see as you can see we have this justified between right there so this is justified between i think this is looking good so one other thing i'm noticing right here is the space is not covering for this so let's see what's up with that and um the last time i checked we have a px right here and um we have we have this so let's see why this is not coming out well so as you can see this this image is not full to the screen but what i'm going to do is i'm going to work on the grid so i'm just going to come right here to this part to this um product items don't forget we said grid cost to one so from md I want to set grid grid calls to two so from md it's going to be two as you can see that has fixed itself now we have this so if you keep going keep having two and let's see where this break off to three so from lg screen of lg it is going to be three so all you need to do is just come to this grid still grid come to lg i'm going to do grid calls will now be three so i'm going to save that and i'm going to come back right here and now you should have three and nothing is displayed yet instead of three it's meant to be four this is four not three so i'm going to change this to four it's meant to be four i'm going to save that and boom we have this exactly what we have right here exactly the same thing but the moment i click out of this as you can see there are more space right here compared to what we have here so let's work on that so i'm just going to come to the entire container right here and i'm going to put something like from xl or from lg let's do from let's do from xl let's do from xl we want px as 20. we can save that and um, not yet the same thing you can come here to change this to 24. we can save that and now you have the same thing so we're going to work on the py as well from excel you can see py should be something like 20. we can save that and we should have this as you can see this is now the same thing and that is all you need to know about this particular project if i should go ahead to inspect this this is displaying well if you come down this is looking good looking good and looking good as you can see so this is where i'm going to wrap up this video tutorial and i'm going to see you in the next episode hello welcome to this video tutorial and in this episode we are going to be building the fifth project using the tailwind css in this particular episode we are going to be building this simple product um, featured more um, like featured category for product or e-commerce website so we'll be building this and uh, we're going to be using the existing method we've been using and that is installing tailwind using the cli so first i'm going to come to my uh, work folder and i'm going to create a new folder right here i'm going to call this episode 21 and this is going to be featured category or featured categories and i'm going to open my vs code i'm going to come here and i'm going to drag this guy right in here just like this and um, to get started with installing the with css i'm going to open my terminal you can go to view and um, your terminal right there and first i'm going to create a package.json file and this will be used to preview to preview the script i'm just going to type in npm yes and in it and while that is loading you need to come to the tailwind um page right here tailwind css.com slash docs slash installation we're going to go through these codes so i'm going to copy the first one npm install dependencies tailwind css and as you can see this first line already created the package.json for us i'm just going to paste that here npm install dependencies tailwind css we're going to wait for that to install 
so now that we have it installed as you can see it already installed all the node modules and the dependency for the thing with css now that we have that installed i'm going to come back right here and i'm going to copy this code and this particular one is going to create the tailwind config file for us i'm just going to paste and click enter and um, the next thing we need to do is to set the um connect the file part of our um work folder so i'm just going to come back right here as you can see this created the tailwind.config.js for us and i'm um, to set a part i'm going to click on this and right here we're going to come to the content and for my project i want everything to be inside a build folder and then inside the build folder i want the i want to put my index.html so what this is saying is locate the build folder and inside the build folder locate every file with html so this is it i'm just going to save that and after doing that the next one to do is we want to create our input the css file i'm going to copy this and i'm going to create it inside the root folder you can start to put it inside another folder let's assume you are going to create a folder here you can call the folder source if you want to or input or anything but i just prefer putting it right here i'm going to type in input.css and i'm going to paste then i'm going to save if you're having any error go ahead to install the post language support um, plugin the extension is available on vs code this one right here post css language support just install it and the error is going to disappear so now that we have that i'm going to come back right here to copy this code and this code is going to be used to create our build folder and also to watch our document so i'm just going to come here i'm going to close this i'm going to come to package.json and i'm going to create a couple of scripts so the first one is going to be the build so i'm going to create a code and paste what i copied from that page i'm going to add a comma and this time around we're going to have npx tailwind css input is going to be directly in my root folder because we have the input the css right here directly in the root folder and then my output is going to be inside a build folder and i want it to be inside a css folder and i want to call it style style.css then i'm going to copy all this i'm going to copy it i'm going to paste and then rename this to watch and get rid of the watch right here so the first script is going to build our project the second one is going to watch it and compile to the output the css so i'm going to save then i can come here to run npm run build so this is going to build our project it's going to create the file parts or the parts we need right here for us and let's wait for that to finish up so as you can see we now have a build folder right here and inside the build folder we have another folder css and inside the css folder we have the style.css so i'm going to come inside the build folder i'm going to create a new file i'm going to call it index.html like that and i'm going to create my boilerplate i'm going to connect this to my css it's going, it's going to be a link and a css i can call this css inside the css folder they find the style of css and i can call this something like um, featured categories featured categories now that we've done that one more thing is i'm going to come back right here i'm going to come to my downloads i have some images prepared already right here i'm just going to cut it i'm going to come back right here and locate the featured categories folder i'm going to enter my build folder and i'm going to paste the image right here so now that we have that i'm just going to come back here and um we have our image we have our css and everything is looking good so we can go ahead to run npm run watch and this is going to watch and compile our work as we work right inside our vs code so currently our file is being watched and i can come here to test it so i'm just going to create a pixel I can do something like um, text green and let's say something like uh, 500 and that is working fine so you can go ahead to just close the terminal and i'm just going to get rid of this i'm going to save it 
and let's come back right here to see our project and what we want to build so we have this guy definitely we're going to use the two-wing css grid so first we're going to have a div for everything and then inside the div we're going to have four divs one two three four so let's go ahead to do that so the first div is going to be the um let's say section container this is going to be our section container we're going to create a div and inside the div we're going to have four divs but first i'm just going to create one then i'm going to duplicate the one into four so let's just go ahead to just create one and um, let's give it a comment you can give it a comment of something like um featured item one and inside each featured box we have um we can we can group this into a div and another div right here so i'm going to come right here can have um, a div and an image if you want to so that's the first div and inside the div we have let's say a paragraph and then we have an h2 and then we have a button so outside the div right here we're going to have the image so you can go ahead to create another div for that and just add the img so i'm going to add the source I'll just look at the img folder and um, we have the iphone.png i'm going to save that so right here we have best best past fast so i'm just going to come to paragraph best past fast and right here we have iphone 12 pro it's a leap year so we have iphone 12 pro it's a leap year and um, i believe that's all we need to do that's all we need to do so for the button we have um shop by category so we have shop by category i'm going to save that and i'm going to come here i'm going to put end of item one so we know where our div ends in case you want to copy and paste i'm just going to save that i'm going to open with the live server so that should open right here let's wait for that to open up and we have this right here so now we're going to go ahead to start styling what we have here i'm going to first inspect and as always we're going to build for mobile first we're going to build for mobile first right here so to get to work we're just going to come here and um we're going to start with this guy right here so first we see the background the background color is something like not pure black more like a zinc kind of color so i'm just going to come here to this div this div is responsible for the entire container of each um box box item so i'm going to come to class first i'm going to start with a big g and a big g of zinc let's go with zinc 800 shade i'm going to save that we have this let me just go ahead to inspect so we have this very similar to what we, are, we have right here and the next thing is we need to customize this text i'm going to come back right here and for the first one what's this for the first one i'm going to have a class and first we're going to start with font sans it's going to be fonts fonts let's see medium font medium is going to be text white and this is going to be all uppercase and um, this is going to be text let's go with text um let's go with text base i'm going to save that and um, we have this i think that is too big so i'm just going to come back right here to reduce this to something like text sm text sm and um, instead of font medium i'm going to do font um, let's go with font 
I'm trying to use the font red shade. So we're going to go with font. Let's go with let's say if we have the font normal. And that should be 400. Yeah, the font normal is 400. I'm going to save it. And I think this is very similar to that. So we're going to start with the second guy right here. I'm going to give it a class. It's going to be font sans as well. This is going to be font. Let's go with the font XL and text text white we want these as capitalized and um we want it to be font bold let's save that and we have this so this is looking too small so i'm just going to increase this to something like a 2xl a 2xl i'm going to save that and uh, i'm going to reload let's come back right here so let's go with 3xl oh no here i think i'm making a mistake with this one so this is going to be fonts it's meant to be font um font bold we have the capitalized then we're going to have text text excel yeah not font excel we're going to have text excel and let's see what we have right here so this is looking bigger I think that is all we need so now that we have that I'm, I'm trying to see if this is the same thing yet so now that we have that let's go ahead to work on the button i'm going to come to the button i'm going to give it a class and first i'm going to start with a bg white and text you can go with the text zinc 900 and uh, we can give it a border radius so you can give it rounded full you can go with rounded full of course this is rounded full so you can go with rounded full and um you can give it a a width fix width you want the width to fit the content and then you can give it a padding right and left or something like uh let's go with a five five times four is twenty or let's go to four and padding top and bottom let's go with a two i'm going to save that and we have this so i'm going to come here and i'm going to work on the text i'm going to do fonts font semi boot and text let's go with the text text base that'll be 16 pixels i'm just going to save this and we have this right here so we can just come here to make this let's say capitalize just to make things a little bit better so the first text is going to be capitalized so now that we have that we can go ahead to target the container right here and we can do something like um class and let's set it as flex and flex should be column definitely and we want to justify Let's justify item to the start. I'm going to save. So they're going to be justified to the start. At least they're going to move to the right here. And now that we have that, the next thing I want to do is let's target this entire container and we're going to give it something like a padding all around. Let's give it something like a padding all around or something like um, let's go with seven. I'm going to save. So that is cool and um, after we've done that we're going to make it rounded so we can do something like rounded and let's start with the rounded let's go with the rounded lg i'm going to save so we have that and um, the next thing i want to do is let me just select mobile right here you can select the iphone and let's select the iphone here as well so as you can see the entire container also have some space so i'm just going to target the entire container i'm going to give the class i can do something like px6 py7 i'm going to save it and we have this so that is looking a little bit bigger so i'm just going to make this py px5 py I can leave it at seven i'm going to save it and we have this 
so right here for this um, rounded we're going to have rounded excel let me change to rounded excel i'm going to save and um, i think this is not looking the same thing yet i'm going to come back right here and let's increase the rounded to to excel that's 16 pixels i'm going to save i think this is way better but one thing not correct now is you notice there's a padding here and we don't have any padding here so if i should come to their own container right here which is this one right here we give it a padding around of seven so we're going to do px right and left seven then pt that is padding top can give you something like seven as well let's save and now we have this so don't forget that this container is responsible for this container and this container so we can also go ahead to display this as flex and we can go like flex column and we can use gap we can either use gap and we can use gap or something like let's try gap of 10 i'm going to save that and this push this down we can also use gap for these guys if i should come here don't forget we displayed we already displayed it as flex we can go and use gap of something like six you can save that and then we have this so this is perfect or better still let's just reduce the gap to something like four we can save that and i'm going to target the button right here the button right here and i want to give it some margin to the top so i'm going to give it margin top of something like five i'm going to save and this is looking perfect so now that we have this if i should come back right here you notice this background is a little bit darker than what we have right here so to fix that i'm just going to come to the main container right here and um, increase the shade to 900 i'm going to save another thing i want to do is i want to give this i want to give each box a specific height since we are using grid and um, what i'm going to do to achieve that is i'm going to target the container of the box right here and this time around i can use arbitrary um height so we can do something like on um, height we can use our arbitrary value and set 400 pixels just like that and after doing that i'm just going to save this as you come here you notice we have a little space at the bottom here i'm going to come to this div that's still connecting everything and i can do justify between and this is going to put space between this div and this div because we already set the main container right here to flex so if i just save that and i come back right here that has been fixed so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to go ahead to copy this guy i'm going to copy i'm going to paste it and this is going to be item 2 and item 2 i'm going to save so now we have this and this time around i'm going to change the image so i can come here to iphone.png i'm just going to remove the iphone and let's see what we have right there and this time around this should be i think this should be laptop so i'm going to come here to images and this should be laptop i'm going to select the laptop i'm going to save it and now we have the laptop if you look at this the background is pure black so we need to work on that as well so i'm going to come here to the main container and this time around it's going to be big g black i'm going to save it and boom we have this guy so now that we have that we need to work on these two other categories so i'm just going to come here and i'm going to copy this again i'm going to paste but this time around the image is going to be at the top while the text is to the bottom so i'm going to cut the image i'm going to come to the top of the container right here and the image is going to be at the top i'm going to change this back to i think this should be watch i'm going to save it and you have the watch at the top oh, we're going to use the headset for it. let me change this to headset headset just head i'm going to save it 
so now we have this and if i should come back right here you see the background of this is red so let's come here and uh, we are going to change the background of this to red and let's go with red 700 i'm going to save and that is too deep so i'm going to change this to something like 600 i'm going to save and let's see what that looks like and that's similar to what we have right here so the next one to work on is look let's work on the padding and the margin so i'm just going to come here and um, we can change what i want to do is let's first change this to something like a 450 pixels i'm going to change this to 450 pixels and 450 pixels and this is going to be 450 pixels as well and um don't forget to add your justify between justify between justify between i'm just going to save that i'm going to come back right here and the space has gotten a little bit bigger and so i'm going to target the container of this guy and this time around it's going to be padding py so it's going to be py so that this one's good padding top and bottom as well and we have this so this is looking way better so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy this guy this is going to be three and this is going to be three as well i'm just going to copy this guy i'm going to paste and this is going to be item four and item four so i'm going to save and this time around this is going to be watch so let's just save that and you have this guy right here so let's see the background color of this is black so let's change the button to black pg black and this is going to be text white so i'm going to copy that and i'm going to replace what we have right here so let's save and now we have this the next thing we want to do is let's change the background of this to green i'm just going to come here to the container and it's going to be bg green let's go with 600 i'm going to save and we have this so i'm going to increase it a little bit to 700 i'm going to save and we have this so now that we've created the layout the next thing we want to do is let's display this guy as a grid so this is the entire container responsible for everything this is the main container responsible for everything so you can go ahead to display this guy as a grid you can do grid and grid column for mobile grid calls is going to be one i want to give it a gap of let's give it a gap of let's say eight i'm going to save it we should get the cap right here so it's as simple as abc now we have the gap but what if we click out of this and we start moving up we want to have two grids so this is looking good like this but the moment we start zooming out as you can see our image is overflowing as you can see the image is overflowing and we need to work on that so one thing we can do is to remove the fixed height so i'm going to come back to my vs code and if you check right here we give it a fixed height when we're creating for the mobile so what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove that i'm going to remove this as well let's come here i'm going to remove this as well and i'm going to remove this as well so now that we remove all the fixed height if i should save now this should be green and shrinking but one other problem we're having now is the moment this gets to this level as you can see it is no longer green that's because it has got into the maximum size of the image and now we're just having more space and more space and more space and if i should come to tailwind css come to breakpoints or use responsive design you see that the breakpoint of the md starts from 768 so if i should come here if i should come here this time we have to get to 768 before we can get a break point but what if we want to get a break point from here from 640 something as you can see we have 
sm from 640 so what we can do is we can come right here to our main container and we can come here we can do sm like this and this time around we want to grid calls as two i'm going to save it and the moment we go above that now as you can see this is now double if you come down this is single but when we, we enter the 640 which is this sm screen as you can see this is now double just like what we have right here so let's keep going for this one the moment we enter the lg screen as you can see the space increased so that means as we keep going the moment we enter the lg the space should increase so what we're going to do is we're going to target the main container again and we're going to do lg and this time around we're going to set the padding let's say let's say px to something like um let's go with 20 and py as well lg py as well is going to be 20. i'm going to save lg is starting from um 1024 pixels so i'm going to come back right here as you can see the space is now the same thing so if you should keep going this is green and this also is green but if you should enter this level we have this and if you should enter this level we have this as well so it's as simple as that we just created what we have right here here so that is all you need to do and this is looking perfect if i should go ahead to inspect this as you can see this is looking good and this is mobile responsive hello welcome to this video tutorial and in this video tutorial we're going to be building a portfolio website using tailwind css so this is the website we're going to be building right here we're going to be building this lovely page using tailwind css this lovely row section the service section with awesome hover experience and um, the buttons right there we have this section we have the client section we have the blog section and then we have the footer right here and also we have this blog page right here which is all mobile responsive if i should go ahead to inspect this this is mobile responsive and as you can see this is displaying well on mobile and this is looking good so this is what we're going to be building in this video tutorial and without any further ado let's get right into the video so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to set up my work environment i'm going to come to my folder this is um a series where i'm teaching full stack website development and currently we are on towing css we've covered html and css towing css and currently we are building projects using towing css so i'm just going to go ahead to create a folder right here and i'm going to call this episode 22 and um, i'm going to give this something like portfolio portfolio and then i'm going to open my vs code i'm going to come right here and drag this guy inside here so we have it here so the next thing i want to do is i'm just going to go ahead to open my terminal i'm going to come to view and you can click on terminal right here and um before you go ahead to do anything or start doing anything i'm just going to give it a, a, a brief um setup so if you should come to your extensions right here there are some plugins you need to have installed so um as you can see some of the plugins you need to install is the post css language support you need to have this installed another one you need to install is the live server you need the live server definitely you want to have it installed you can go ahead to install all the other um extensions right here like the auto rename tag the format html and php html css support material icon team and um i think prettier code and then you can install the tailwind css in tell lessons you can install this guy and you'll be good so now that we have that i'm just going to open this and the first thing i like then is creating a package or json file to build my script so i'm just going to go ahead to write in it um npm i mean npm yes and in it 
so this is going to build and create my package.json file and before you be able to run all this kind of code you need to have node.js installed on your computer so just head over to google search for node.js install it download and install it on your computer and then you'll be able to run your code this way so i'm just going to click on enter and um we should have our package.json file installed for us right here we have the package.json file and this is where i'm going to pre-build my script instead of writing long scripts inside the terminal i'm just going to build my script using the script part right here so now that we have that let's go ahead to install Tailwind css so if, if you should come to the Tailwind css website you have tailwindcss.com slash docs slash installation you can come right here to copy this code which is npm install dependencies Tailwind css so this is going to install all the node dependency used by Tailwind CSS. I'm just going to paste and I'm going to click on enter and let's wait for that to load. So now we have all the um, node dependencies installed for us. You can see right here we have the node modules and we have the package lock.json. So I'm just going to come back right here and now I'm going to create my tailwind.config.js file. I'm just going to come here. I'm going to paste the code. That'll be npx tailwind css init i'm going to click on enter and while that is loading if i should come back right here for the next stage you need to connect your tailwind build project your development project to your actual file path so i'm going to come back to vs code and as you can see this created the tailwind.config.js file for us and i'm going to click on it i'm going to come to the contents and i'm going to link it to my build project currently i'm yet to be, um, create the build folder but how i want my website to go is i'm just going to come right here i want it to locate a file a folder called build all my projects all my work images index.htm everything is going to be inside the build folder so we have the build folder then locate every um locate every folder that, that, that may contain maybe index.html i'm going to show you that in the moment when we start developing for example inside the build folder i want to have another folder that's going to be called pages just for example so you understand something like something like this exists i want to have another another folder called pages and then also locate every file that starts with dot html so i can write the code like this save it and everything will be good and now you can do it in case you want to keep things simple is you can do locate a folder called build and inside the build folder locate every file that ends with dot html you can do this then add a comma then create another rule i can do locate a folder called build and then locate another folder called pages inside the build folder and find every dot html html file inside the pages folder so it's as simple as that and you can go ahead to save so i'm going to close this then i'm going to come back right here we need to create our input to the css i'm going to copy i'm going to come back to um this to the root folder i'm just going to create a file i'm going to call it input.css let's click enter i'm going to paste now when you paste this sometimes you might see the red yellow arrow you have to go ahead to install this plugin post css language support have it installed and you're going to be good so now that you have that the next thing you want to do now is let's go ahead to create our build folder and I've, as i've said from the beginning of the tutorial i i i'm going to use the tailwind um the package.json i mean i'm going to use the package.json to pre-build my scripts so i'm just going to come right here the first one i want to build is going to be the build script the script that is going to create our css folder our css um style style sheet for us so i'm going to call this one build and i'm going to paste the code i just copied from i'm going to i'm going to control z you need to put it inside inside the double quote i'm going to paste it right there i'm going to add a comma and right here we have the npx thing with css input as you can see our input file is inside the root folder so we're not looking inside any source any source folder so directly to the root folder input.css and our output as i've, as I've mentioned earlier is going to be inside a build folder 
and um, i want my css inside another css folder and i want this to be called style.css so go ahead to copy all this code let's copy that i'm going to come here to paste it and change this to watch and get rid of the watch right here that is on the build so we're going to have this go ahead to save i'm going to inspect this one more time to make sure everything is correct impute the css of aspect build css style css and about the watch so everything is looking good to build our uh, work folder all i need to do is do npm run the script so first i want to run the build script so i'm going to type in build i'm going to click enter and this is going to create our work folder for us and as you can see this created a build folder and inside the build folder we have the css folder as i specified right here and then we have the style.css so now inside this build folder directly inside the build, this build folder i want to create a file i'm going to call it index.html just like that and inside this build folder as well i'm going to create another folder i'm going to call this pages and inside the pages folder i'm going to create a file called blog.html and this should start making sense because in the row part i should come to um tailwind config.js it said locate the build folder this is the build folder and locate every file that ends with .html and we have our index.html so we'll be able to connect to our css easily and also we created another rule locate the build folder we have it right here locate the any page called any folder called pages we have it right here and locate every .html file in it and we have the blog.html so that is just what we did i'm going to come to my index.html i'm going to create a boilerplate like this and i'm just going to call this persona and i'm going to link to the css file both the index.html and the css folder is, is in are both inside the same root so i can go ahead to type in link css and okay the css folder and we have the style.css i'm going to save that so now that i have that created i can go ahead to watch my project and start building the portfolio website so all i need to run is npm run watch and this is going to watch and compile anything i do right here inside the style.css file that we created so this is looking good this is being compiled so let me just go ahead to test what we have right here I can something like par um paragraph and i can do text let's say text green and let's go to shadow 500 and let's see if this will work and boom this is working fine so i can go ahead to get rid of that save it and everything is looking good i'm just going to close this i'm going to close the package or json as well and i think we are good to go so let's come back right here to see the project we actually want to build as you can see we have sections we have another section right here we have section here section here and first let's start with the main section so for the main section the hero section we have this large um div so i'm just going to create that div right here or oh, first let me add the comments hero section right there so we're going to have a div and inside the div as you can see we have the header and we have the normal text so we need to have a header right here so we can do something like header and the header is going to have another div and then right here we have hero section content right here so you can go ahead to do something like another div you can add the comments i can put um hero content and this is going to have another div so at the end of this part you can put end end of hero section so we know we've ended the hero section and we're about to start another section so starting with this we have the header and inside the content we have you can give this a paragraph we have a paragraph so inside the row section content we have a paragraph that's one we have a header i can use an h1 or an h2 i'm just going to go with an h1 can use an h1 then we can have another paragraph or maybe like an h2 or h3 i'm just going to go with h3 we have another h3 and um we have social icons right here 
so as you can see we need to display the social icons as flex as the they are being displayed horizontally so we can just come right here we can just create another div you can put a comment right there and you can call this um hero socials and underneath it you can just add a div and we're going to come back to attend to that so i'm just going to save i'm going to open this with live server let's click open with live server and this will open up right here and we have this cool guy so first as i mentioned earlier or in case you don't know about it let me mention it again when developing your website an actual project you want to develop for mobile first you want to build your website for mobile first then adapt it to tablet and desktop so i'm going to go ahead to click on inspect and this will bring me to the mobile mobile view i'm going to click on this and most times i like going with the iphone 12 pro in case you can't find this just click on edit and select the um device here and save it and you're going to see it so we have this for mobile and uh, i'm going to get started i'm going to inspect here as well and we have this so to get started i already pro um made some images right here we have the images all the images we are going to need we have them right here i'm just going to select the image folder i'm going to cut it and um, i'm going to come back right here to my work folder portfolio i'm going to enter my build and i'm going to paste the folder right here the link to download the source the images and everything used in this video is in the description below so you can locate it and have it on your computer so now that i have that if i should come here to the build as you can see we have the css images and pages and they're all looking good so i'm going to come back right here and first and foremost you notice this is having a background image so there are a lot of ways to go about that but to keep things simple i'm just going to use a style css i'm just going to use style that is inline css and i'm going to go with something like background background image like that and it's going to be url and we're going to have something like a um, single quote and we want to locate the images images folder and inside the images folder i want to locate um bg.jpg i'm going to add my quote close my um bracket like that and then i want to add a semicolon right here so we have this and that is all i need to do and also we're going to have a class i'm just going to leave that that way i'm going to save it for now you're not going to see anything here because we're here to add any content right here so first let me go ahead to copy the content so we have hello my name is moses so i'm going to come to the paragraph right here hello my name is moses or let me just go with hello my name is patrick or something i'm just going to go with hello my name is so we have hello my name is and then we have patrick bradley so come right here patrick bradley i think l e y so we have this and then we have um i'm a writer and video blogger i'm a writer and video blogger so this is looking good i'm just going to save that let's come back right here and we can start seeing some text right here so the next thing i want to do is i want to work on the header so for the header we're going to have two things first we're going to have the image parts we're going to have the image and then we're going to have some text right here so i can just go ahead to put the image right here you can do img I want to look at the source and I'm going to enter my images folder and um, let's see logo.svg that is the first one I'm going to save it and after that I'm going to create another div which is going to be which is going to contain my menu items so instead of using div I'm just going to go with using an ordered list so I'm going to go with ul and inside my ul um, tag I'm going to have two link tags and inside the link tags i'm going to have my li so this is going to be i think we have home i can just put 
and a hash right there just for reference we have the home and i'm going to copy this with paste and then we have the blog we have the blog i'm going to save this okay cool we have this right here so this is looking good so first and foremost let's work on this header this header right here so i'm going to come here to this uh, menu items the ul i'm going to type in class and i want to display it as flex and it's going to be flex row um just like that i'm just going to save come right here and um you should start seeing this element right here so after that i'm going to come to this div containing both the image and the ul i'm going to give it a class and i'm going to make it also flex and flex row i'm going to save and this time around we now have them side by side and one thing i want to do is i want to justify between so let's just fight between i'm going to save it i not see it yet but you notice the text i've now moved here so what i just did was first i displayed this guy as flex so that this image and this container can be side by side and secondly um i displayed this guy as flex so that these two guys can be side by side so these two guys will be side by side with this flex and these two container will be side by side with this flex then just five between is going to put equal amount of space between the two elements so now that we have this let me go ahead to style this guy first i'm just going to come here to the a tag i'm going to type in class and fourth first i'm going to do font sans and um, font I'm going to be font let's go with font semi bold and text going to be text white and um i think you can go with text let's say text base and i want it uppercase so let's see if i'm just going to come here and as you can see i can see the home right here so we have the home instead of home is meant to be me so we have the me and um, i think that is perfect and then on hoover on hoover i want to change the text to orange let's go with orange 600 right there i'm going to save it and i'm going to copy this guy i'm going to copy and i'm going to paste it right here i'm going to save and now we have the me block so one thing i'm going to do is i can come right here and i can put a gap so i can do gap and let's just go with gap of let's try gap of three i'm going to save that so as you can see we have some space between these two guys and that is looking good so for the logo you can come right here you can give it a class and come in so let's give it a class and let's adjust the width and do width um w w is for width and let's go with um let's try let it occupy 50 percent let's try one over two let's see what that looks like i'm going to save and that is too much so let's just go with pixels uh let's go with um let me go with something like 28 20 should be 112 pixels in terms of width so i'm going to save that and we have this this is looking good but looks distorted kind of and the reason why it is distorted is because the image is directly on um underneath the flex item so you can go ahead to put this image inside the div tag i'm just going to cut this guy i'm going to put it right here and this should solve it getting distorted as you can see that has been solved but as you can see this image is looking a lot smaller so let's bring this guy down to 20 and that should be around 96 pixels or 80 pixels i'm going to save it that is looking too small let's come back right here increase this guy to 24 i'm going to save that is way better 
so the next thing i'm going to do is you notice we have some space right here and right here so i'm just going to come here i'm going to target the hero div and we have a class right here and i'm going to give it a padding right and left or something like six and a padding top of something like um let's go with seven i'm going to save it and we have this so this is looking perfect so after doing that the next thing we want to do is let's work on the image before we work on the image let's work on this text i'm going to come back right here and then we have this guy i'm just going to come here give the class and it's going to be font sans it's going to be font semi bold and it's going to be text orange 600 right there and um let's go with text this uppercase and i'm just going to save and we have this guy which is similar to what we have here so i think the this one is going to be font bold let's go with font bold and um i think i'm going to increase the text size to something bigger but well, let's just go with this and this is looking cool so let's just work on this now so this one is going to be class class and this one is going to be font serif and um, it should be font um, extra bold font extra bold and this will be text whites this will be uh, let's go with um capitalize that is that is first letter is going to be capitalized i'm just going to save that and we have this so the next thing i want to do is to work on the size i'm just going to go ahead to give it something like um let's see text let's go with text to excel and let's see what that looks like i'm going to save we have this and this is not close to this at all so let's go with 5 xl i'm going to save that and now this is similar to what we have right here but not exactly the same thing so i'm just going to increase to something like 6 xl i'm going to save and i think that should be exactly the same thing this is looking cool so now we have the last one i'm a writer a video blogger i'm just going to come here copy this class can copy come here paste it but this time around change the text orange 600 to text white i'm going to save it and um, boom we have that so now the next thing i want to do is let's display these guys down but before i display them let me just go ahead to work on these icons so as you can see we have some icons right here and we need to work on them as well so what i'm going to do is right here i'm just going to create an a tag and inside the a tag i'm going to have um, a link to an icon so I, I like using icon design so i'm going to come here to iconify the design and the first icon i'll search for is going to be uh, messenger i'm just going to come here search for messenger click enter and um can go with this any one of these i'm just going to before i select this let me just select this and i'm going to copy the script right here copy come back right here come to my index.html right after the css i'm going to paste it and then i'm going to come back right here to copy the the icon um tag i'm going to put it in between my css my a tag i'm going to paste it right there so after doing that i'm just going to copy this guy and paste it four times and after the facebook messenger i think we have twitter the instagram and the youtube so i'm just going to come here search for twitter so we can go to any of this i'm just going to select this and i can copy this just this class right here let's copy it come here and replace what we have here and then we have instagram so 
so i'm just going to select this copy this as well and replace this guy and finally we have youtube so i'm just going to select this copy this guy and i'm going to replace this guy so i'm going to save i should come back right here if you start seeing some icons right here which is looking good so the next thing is to style them i'm just going to come here and to start them i'm going to target the icon directly so i'm just going to come here and give it a class and first i want to give it a color of text white we can use text white because we are using the icon directly as an svg so and since we've connected it right here so we can use the normal text color we have text white and then the bg i can give it a background color or something like a zinc and let's go with uh zinc 800 you can go with zinc let's go with zinc 700 just like that and you can do rounded i want it rounded full so let's go rounded full right here and um another thing we can do is you can give it a width let's go with a width of let's see let's go with the width of i'm trying to say the width you can use now let's go with the width of 16 pixels i'm going to give it four and let's do a padding all around or something like um let me go with two i think we have to have text white right here i'm just going to come to this div right here i'm going to give it a class i'm going to set it as flex and flex row instead of giving it a fixed width let me just remove the fixed width right here and uh, let me go with the padding of three since i've displayed them as flex and the next answer this one give the size so you can go with text let's use text 3 excel let's save and let's see what that looks like and um we have this guy right there i'm just going to the reason why i move the fixed width is because the fixed width is, is going to kind of distort things because this is a flex item and they are not inside the div they are directly inside an inline element so i can just go ahead to copy this guy come right here to control v same here control v same here control v i'm just going to save that and um we have what we have right here which is very similar to what is here i think something is different here i just come here i think we are going to increase the shade to something like 800 so 800 and this 800 and this 800 i'm going to save it and we have this it looks more like that disappeared but it is actually still there so now that we have that the next thing we want to do is let's go ahead to start working on these guys so starting with the text right here we have a div right here and um, we have these guys as well so one thing i want to do to make things easy for me is to put all these guys inside their own div so i'm just going to come here create a div and i'm just going to cut these guys the text and i'm going to put them right in here so i'm going to select everything i'm going to press my tab to adjust it and i'm going to leave a comment here hero text i'm going to save it nothing is going to change because i didn't really do anything so nothing is going to change so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to come here i'm going to give it a class display it as flex and flex row and one thing we want to do now is to align items items to center i'm going to save and by now our content should move to the center so we should have this Oh, not not um flex hero is meant to be flex call flex call let's call because we want to have it straight not like this so currently our items are to the center but you notice the text is to the left and the reason is because this is the text is breaking into two so we need to adjust that i'm going to come right here to the text and um at the end i can just add maybe like text text center i'm going to save that 
and uh, boom we have the text to the center this is looking good so another thing we want to do is we can target this entire div containing the two containers we can set as class flex i can have flex call and um, this time around we want to just fire all the items to the center i'm gonna save not my change but then our icon has come to the center so this is looking good for us and um the next thing we want to do is we can come right here so we can target individual items here as well we can do items center so we have item center i'm going to save that and everything is looking all good the next thing we want to do is we can target the DRV containing these two elements and we can give it a gap so let's go with a gap of five let's see what that looks like and save it and uh, i think we have a gap right there but that is not looking enough so i'm just going to increase the gap to seven i'm going to save that and now we have more visible gaps so also we need to put gap between these text items so to do that i'm just going to target the text item container we can do something like gap let's go with um a five let's save that and we have this which is not looking enough i think that is reasonable enough so we have this and um we need to put gap between these guys as well i'm going to come here to this guy and let's go with a gap of something like two or three so we do gap let's go with a gap of three let's save it and these guys have moved out so that is looking cool so the next thing we want to do is we want to leave some padding at the top and padding to the bottom of this guy and um, one way to do that is let's target the main container remember i give it a padding top so let's give it a padding bottom pb that's going to be the padding bottom let's give it a padding bottom of something like 100 and let's go to 28 that's 112 pixels I'm just going to save that and we have this much padding to the bottom and now we need to work to the top so we can't really give the padding to the top what we are going to target is we're going to target this container the container for the content and what we're going to give it is it going to be margin to the top so we're going to give it empty margin to the top so let's go with 28 as well i'm just going to save and um, waiting for that to load so margin to the top empty let's save and let's see where we have this so this is actually very similar to what we have here but one thing you notice is the image is not showing despite the fact that we set a background image right here so to fix that we need to move the image around that is you no know, way you're using normal html and css you can set image top bottom um something like that so we can go ahead to do something like um bg so we can do bg let's try bg center i'm going to save come back right here and um this is this is too big so i'm going to do something like bg cover bg cover this is going to cover like this contain the not contain this bg contain bg cover bg auto but cover is going to make the image at least be centered to the center and also display a good proportion i'm going to come back right here and we have this which is actually very similar to what we have right here as you can see but one thing i noticed is this is looking to shorter than what we have here so i can make this a little bit longer i'm going to come here i'm going to target the margin top we have right here and let's go with uh, 30 a 32 and um, that's 128 pixels i'm going to save it and um, boom we have exactly almost the same thing not exactly the same. this is still longer not exactly the same thing but this does the trick so now that we have this the next thing we need to do is to work on this next section so to work on the next section i'm going to first close out of this so we can inspect what we have right here so first we have another div a big div which is going to be the main section container 
and then inside that we're going to have three divs one div two div and three div and then we'll create the inner guys so these three items the stack over and under we're going to use the css flex the thing with css flex and then for this particular one we're going to use flex for this we can use flex for this as well or we even use the grid and we can use grid for this so let's get started i'm just going to come here and um, we have the first section done right here so we can just close the first section from here that's the end of the first section and then we have the second section you can just call this the services section service section and uh, we're going to have three divs first div we're going to have three divs inside the main div so this is the main div and here we can just put end of um service section and inside this one we're going to have three divs we're going to have div1 this is going to be more like the header right here we have this guy then we have div2 and div3 so we have div2 and div3 so for the div1 we're going to have another let's say like a div to contain these guys and then we're going to have a button so for the first one we're going to have a div and the div is going to contain let's say a p tag and let's say an h2 so underneath the div we're going to have a button so let me just bring this out and give this a, a quote right there and we can just put something like header and uh, this will be the end of header and let's quickly fill in fill in those guys so the first one we have zero one and we have services so we can come back right here and i can put zero one a dot and then services and for the button we have view all services so we have view all services that is looking good and for the second container which is this one we're going to have um three divs inside it so for this one I can just come here leave a comment right here and this is going to be let's say services services items and um, for the third one this is going to be clients so you can just open it down and come back to work on it this is going to be let's say counters you can just give it counters so you can do services counters so i'm just going to save and um we'll start working on start with the first div right here so i'm going to come back to my work mode right here and let's go ahead to inspect this guy and let's see what we have right here so first and foremost you notice the background is dark very dark so i'm going to come here i'm going to target the main um, section container i'm going to give it a class i'm going to do bg let's say bg zinc i'm going to go with 900 that's the first thing i don't forget we'll be working we have to work with the same padding right and left so we give the first um container right the first section right here px6 that is padding right and left so i'm going to do px6 again and for padding top and bottom i can just do py that is top and bottom let's go with py10 i'm just going to save that and let's see what we have right here and this is dark just like what we have here and the next thing i want to do is if you should look at this for mobile you notice these guys are displayed they are stacked and that means they are displayed as flex so first let's work on this guy i'm going to come here this is going to give i'm going to give it a class this is going to be font sans and this is going to be font bold and this is going to be text orange and um 600 and um i'm going to use as a text base let's just save that and let's see what we have right here and we have this which is exactly what we have here then the next thing is we have the services so i can just come here right here as well give it a class this is going to be font sans this is going to be font extra bold 
and we're going to have text text white and let's say text to excel let's see what that gives i'm going to save we have this i'm just going to come back right here to increase this guy to something like for excel and this should be capitalized i'm going to save i'm just going to reload it so we have this which is exactly what we have here and now that we've done that let's work on the last one which is the button i'm just going to come to the button I'm going to give the class first i'm going to to outline let's do no we don't use outline let me just go with the bg let me give the bg zinc and let's go with uh, let's say 700 or 800 let's see can go with um let's go with 800 bg 800 the 800 shade and uh, we can do text white text white font sans text you can do text um base you can do uppercase and uh, rounded let's go with rounded md i'm just going to save that and let's see what we have right here so we have this guy let me reload and uh, i'm going to come back right here to increase this to something like text excel let's save and uh, we have this so i'm going to give it maybe like fonts semi bold that would be 600 font semi bold i'm going to save that and we can go ahead to do let's say px of um party right and left or something like um let's go with four and py let's just go with um 2.5 i'm going to save that and let's see what we have here so this is looking good almost the same as what we have here but i'm just going to come here to increase the py to something like three and px to something like five and um for the background color i'm going to use 700 i'm going to save this guy and uh, we have this which is not very similar so i'm just going to change this guy back to 800 i'm going to save and this is better now so the next thing you notice is this is all uppercase so i'm just going to come okay we've done uppercase already i think we are good and this is not uppercase i think oh 3p i'm just going to remove one p i'm going to save that and we have this so this is small this is looking too big so i'm going to change the text excel to something like um let's try the text base again i'm going to save and we have the same thing i'm just going to change this to bold i'm going to save and we have exactly the same thing so first i'm going to display this div this guy as flex so i'm going to come here i'm going to display them as flex class i'm going to do flex and this is going to be flex zero and this is going to be um items this is going to be flex column this is going to be flex column because they are stacked above and another and we're going to do items this time around it's going to be items to the center i'm going to save that i should come back right here as you can see the items are to the center already and don't forget we have this button and this div inside the same um container we can also do the class we can do flex flex column we can do items center as well we get save and we have them right here so the next thing we want to do is we want to give space between these two guys and also these guys so first let's give this i'm going to do gap or something like um let's go with seven i'm going to save that and we have the gap right there so i'm going to also give a gap right here so i'm going to target this div and we can do a gap of something like three let's save 
and we have this this is looking perfect so the next thing we want to do now is we need to work on this these guys so i'm just going to click out of this as you can see we have three of these i'm going to come here i already have the container right here i'm just going to create one first and then i'm going to duplicate it so we're going to have a div and inside the div we're going to have an icon um a heading and a paragraph so you can just come here to icon design so first let me see the icon so we have image or gallery i can come to icon design and i can search for gallery just click enter and um, i'll just go with one of these anyone goes so I'm just going to select this i'm going to copy i'm going to copy this copy i'm going to come here so we start with an icon then we have we can use h3 we have an h3 and uh, we can call these filming services filming services and we have a paragraph so for the paragraph i'm just going to come here to select this guy let's copy it let's come back right here and i'm going to paste it right there so i'm going to save and let's go back to the inspect mode and uh, we have this so if i should come here we have it right there i'm just going to start with the icon so let's give it a class and definitely you want to do text white and text let's go with text um let's go text excel that's 20 pixels i'm going to save and we have this so i'm just going to change this to 2 excel and that should do the trick we have this guy i'm going to use 3 excel so we have 3 excel for that then i'm going to come to this header i'm going to give it a class i think the color is um, pure white as well so i'm going to have font sans font semi bold i'm going to have text let's go with text um let's go with text to excel and let's go with um text white i want to go with uppercase i'm just going to save that come back here and the text is looking too big so i'm going to come here to change this to capitalize not uppercase it's going to be capitalized and let's change this to text excel i'm going to save it and um, this is looking better then let's work on the last item so i'm just going to come here it's going to be class it's going to be font sans fonts um font medium and um, text let's go with text base text white and i'm just going to save that and we have this which is exactly what we have here so the next thing we want to do now is to display these guys to the center as you can see we have this div right here so i'm going to target the div i'm going to do class so first we're going to display it as flex and this is going to be flex call and items we want to display items to the center and let's go with a gap of maybe like four i'm going to save and as you can see everything displayed to the center aside this text so we need to come to the text and we need to put text center i'm going to save that and we have this so this is what we have here and we have it here as well so this is looking good but one other thing i want to do is for the icon i'm just going to give the icon a margin button so i'm going to do mb let's go with an mb or something like um let's say eight and get save that'll be eight times four and that'll be like um so we have this but that is looking too much i'm going to change this guy to something like five i'm going to save that'll be five times four twenty pixels i think this is better 
this is better but i still let's change this guy to something like three i'll be three times four i'll be 12 pixels i think this is better and now that we have that i'm just going to come here this is the container right here and i need to give it a background color so we'll do bg zinc let's go with 800 i'm going to save as you can see we now have the background and what next is to give it a padding top and bottom or just give it the same padding all around i'm just going to do p let's go to p10 that'll be 10 times 4 that'll be 40 pixels all around and we have that as you can see so the next thing to do is to make it rounded i'm going to come here i'm going to do rounded and let's go with the rounded md i'm going to save it and this is now looking rounded the next thing i want to do is to copy this guy we have the div this is the item i'm going to copy paste it three times one to paste it twice i mean so we have three items i'm just going to save and now you have three so what i'm going to do now is to put some gap between them and um you can come here as, as you can see we've displayed we've, we have a container right here containing the three items i can set it to um class and flex no we're not using flex for this let's use grid so let's just go with grid let's go with grid calls one and let's give it a gap of something like um seven i'm going to save that and as you can see we have this so this is looking awesome let me increase let me increase the gap to something like eight i'm going to save that and this is still more so i'm just going to come here let's increase this to nine i'm going to save And I think 10 will do the trick. So I'm going to make it 10. I'm going to save it. Perfect. So the next thing I want to do now is let's work on the last um, column right here. Before we work on the on that column, let's give some space between these guys. As you can see, we don't have the space here. And one thing you should notice is this container is going to accommodate both the first container, the second container, and the third container. And so that means you can go ahead to display this as flex or we just use let's say the space y but i just press in flex you can split it as flex and this is going to be flex call i can use a gap of let's go with a gap of 10 i'm going to save that and as you can see we got the gap we need or better still let's just go with a gap of 12 i'm going to save and this does the trick so we have this so the next thing we're doing now is to work on this guy right here so it's more like we're having a div and then we're going to have div 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 so same thing so we already created the div right here so let's go ahead to create the first div and this is going to contain an icon as well so i'm just going to come here i'm going to search for people and i can just go with any of this so let me just go with this i'm going to copy this guy so let's start with an icon i'm going to have an icon and um i'm going to have let's see something like an h4 can have an h4 you can have an h4 and then we have a paragraph so for the h4 we have four five nine k so we have four five nine k and then we have subscribers so we are going to write um subscribers right here and um that's basically it i'm just going to save and if i should come back right here we have it right here down here so the next thing is to style them as you can see the icon is orange you have orange white white so we can just go ahead to do what we need to do i'm going to come to the icon first i'm going to give it a class so this is going to be text orange 
and um, 600 and let's go with um text let's say for the icon for the icon size let's go with 2xl like that or even 3xl let's go with 3xl and i think that's all we need to do i'm going to save it come back right here and we have the icon so the next thing is going to be the number i'm going to give it a class and this is going to be font sans font extra bold text white text let's go with um let's say 3xl and um let me just save and let's see what we need to do again so we have this 45 nike which is very similar to what we have here and um, the next thing is the last um text i'm just going to come here the paragraph i'm going to give the class font sans this is going to be font semi bold this is going to be capitalized this is going to be text base and we can do text we can do text white i'm just going to save and we have this which is very similar to what we have here but if you look at this you notice this is pure white this is not pure white so we can do text zinc and let's say zinc 200 i'm going to save that and if i should come here you should get something like off white right here exactly so now that we have that the next thing is to display this guy as um flex i'm going to come to class it's going to be flex it's going to be flex call and items to the center so i'm just going to save that and we have this guy and we can go ahead to give it a gap let's give it a gap of three i'm going to save i think that is better and for the text you notice this is way bigger so i'm just going to come here to the um heading i'm going to change this to 4 excel you can save it and let's compare oh, but that's the, let's go with 5 excel i'm going to save it now this is looking too big so i'm just going to come here change it back to 4 excel i'm going to save now i'm going to copy this container let's copy paste one two three i'm going to save it and now we should have three so i'm going to target the container responsible for the four of them first i'm going to give it a bg i'm going to give the class and it's going to be bg let's go with um let's see okay there's no bg but that's still let's see this one okay as you can see the color is different so i'm going to give it bg zinc and this is going to take 800 so let's save that and we have this the next thing is to work on the padding so we can just go padding and let's go with padding of let's see how big this is let's go with padding of something like um let's go with 16 i'm going to save And as you can see we have this padding the next thing we want to do now is to display it as flex and let's go with flex flex call and we have a gap of something like let's go with a gap of 10 i'm going to save it and we have this which is very similar to what we have right there so let's increase the gap to something like 12 good to save and we have this the next thing we want to do is make it rounded i'm just going to come here i'm going to do rounded md i'm just going to save it and boom we have this guy the next thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to go ahead to change the icons of these guys so right here we have digital marketing let's come back here we have digital marketing 
and for the last one we have visual effects we have visual effects i'm just going to save and we have this so you can, you can go ahead to change the icon so i can just come here and just use social search for social click enter and you can just go with any of this if you want i'm just going to select this um, let's go with this then i'm going to select that copy the class come back right here and um, just replace this icon class here and for the last one visual effect let's search for video and um i'm just going to go with one of this to go with this one copy the class come here and replace the icon class right here with paste and we have that let's save and let's see what we've done As you can see we have this the next thing I want to do is to change the icon of this guy so we have right here we have 300 plus projects so we have 300 300 plus projects and we have 400 video scripts 400 and we have video scripts and for the last one we have 200 commercials 200 and we have commercials so let's save and we have this this is perfect so let's go ahead to change the icons so for the project we have something like a briefcase or a suitcase so let's let me just search for case and i'm just going to go with this one i'm going to copy the icon class and i'm going to replace the class right here And then for the video scripts, then let's come here, search for scripts, or scripts, and I can just go to any of this. I'm going to select this one, I'm going to copy this, and change the class right here. And for the last one, we have commercials. I'm just going to search for camera and um let's go with i'm going to go with this i'm just going to copy this guy and um replace the class let's save it and let's see what we have and as you can see this is very similar to what we have right here so the next thing we want to do now is to go ahead to build this next section so i'm going to create a quote a comment i mean and i can just call this the client area something like that so let's go ahead to inspect what we have right here i'm going to close out of this and um right here we're going to have a container right here and inside the container we're going to have two containers and then inside the second container we're going to have one two three four we're going to have eight containers and then we're going to use grid to display this and flex to display this so let's get to work i'm going to come back right here and i'm going to first create the main container and then the two containers that we need so inside the first container we're going to have um let's say a paragraph a header and a paragraph so we can go ahead to create a paragraph like this an h let's go with an h2 or better still to make everything sync i think so far we've been using h2 for the main headers so let's continue with that so we're going to go with an h2 and another paragraph so you can come back right here and let's write what we have right here we have o2 dot and our clients we have zero two dot and um, right here we have our our clients 
and then we have this text so i'm just going to grab it get to copy come back right here and i'm going to paste it i'm going to save that and after doing that i'm just going to give some space here this is going to be for the second um, grid so i'm going to come back right here to inspect and um, we have this right here so if you look at this the design of this is very similar to what we have right here so we can go ahead to copy the same class so i'm going to open this back and for the number we have the p here this is the number 01 you can just copy this class copy and scroll all the way down to the p tag i'm going to paste that and then for the h as well the same thing so right here we're using um h2 for services i'm going to copy the class let's make sure i copy everything to the class i'm going to copy it scroll all the way down and i'm going to paste that so now that we have that i don't think we have any other okay we can copy this this is a paragraph I can just copy this right here the one under the services sections digital marketing visual effects so there's a paragraph there the class copy it and i'm going to paste as well i'm going to save that and um, let's come back right here to see what we have here so nothing is displaying i'm just going to reopen my open with live server i'm going to inspect it and then i can just get rid of this and do we have the text here i can come to this main guy to the main container to the main container of the entire section and let's give it a background color so i'm going to give it a bg zinc we're using bg zinc of let's see the background color we have right here so the background color right here is light just like the one we have here so we're going to use bg zinc 800 900 is the darker one i don't forget our px padding right and left is going to be six and py let's go with um for py let's go with 12. i'm just going to save that so if i should come back right here now we have this so what we want to display is exactly like this so we can go ahead to copy the main container class as well so i'm just going to come here for this div if i should come all the way to this part this div as you can see you see flex call um flex flex call item center and the gap is three i'm just going to copy that come back right here and i'm just going to paste oh i didn't create the class i'm going to control z create a class and i'm going to paste let's save that and let's see what we have so now we have this which is very similar to what we have right here so this is looking good the next thing we want to do is i think we're done with that we just go ahead to work on these other guys right here so i'm going to i'm going to come here to the second div and i'm going to create the first item and inside the first first item the only thing we have there is just an image so i'm just going to come right here create an img and let's go with images and we have clients one two three four five Stick up to eight so i'm going to start with the client one and um can just go ahead to copy this guy i'm just going to copy we have two three four five six seven eight so we have client one let's go with client two we have the client three client four and um we have five we have six we have seven and um, we should have eight so i'm going to save that and if i should come back right here as you can see we have all the clients right there so the first thing i want to do is i'm just going to come to this img i'm going to create a class and we want to give it a bg zinc and we're going to use 900 and let's give it a padding right and left and a padding top and bottom so px padding right and left let's go with um let's try 16 or let's go with 14 and padding top and bottom py let's go with let's say 20 
I'm going to save that and let's see what that looks like. So we have this that is looking too big. So I'm going to bring this guy down to 12 and this down to 16. So I'm going to save it. And um, we have this, which is quite similar to what we have right here, but still looking too big. So I'm going to bring this down to 10. This will be 10 and this is going to be something like a 14. You can save. Yeah, this is looking way better. So after that, I'm going to make it rounded and it's going to be rounded MD. I'm going to save. And as you can see, this is now rounded. So I'm going to copy this class inside the remaining um, image items. I'm just going to come here, Control V, and um, come here, Control V, here as well, Control V, and um, come here, Control V. So I'm going to save. And if I should come back right here, we have all these guys. So now that we have that, as you can see, we have the main container right here containing all this item. So we can come right here to give it a class and we can display it as grid. And for mobile, we want grid calls as two. We want two columns. So I'm going to save that and now we should have two columns. And uh, we are meant to have two columns right here. Let me load that. And yeah, we have two columns right there. Let's give this div this class instead of giving it to the image. Let's give it to the to the um, div directly. So I'm going to copy this. Let's give this to the div instead to make things very easy for us. So we are targeting the first div alone. We paste this there. We paste this there and here and here and here and here so now that we have that you can get rid of the class inside the image so we're going to get rid of this as well just the class inside the image just get rid of this so that everything can give us the same height instead of the started height we're going to get rid of this and we have this and uh, we have the last one right here so if i should save and i come back right here now they are all the same height so the next thing i'm going to do is we already displayed this as grid and grid calls as two we can go ahead to give it a gap and let's go with a gap of 10. i'm going to save and boom we have what we have right here so this is looking too big too big so i'm going to make the gap eight i'm going to save it and we have this this is looking perfect so now that we have that the next thing we need to do is let's go ahead to make the space here the same thing with the gap so if i should come here as you can see the gap 8 is 32 pixels so we can come to the main container right here that is responsible responsible for the px so 32 pixels should be something like um let's go with the 9 that's a 36. Let's go to 8. PX8 is going to give us the 2 pixels. I'm going to save it. So now we have the same space all around. So the next thing we want to do is let's give this container and this inner container some space. Uh, don't forget this container is responsible for these two guys. So we can just go ahead to display it as flex. Can do flex. We can do flex call. And we can do gap. Let's go with the gap of 10. I'm going to save that. And we have this, which is very similar to what we have right here. So as you can see, we just recreated what we have here to this part. And the next section we need to build now is going to be the news part. So I'm just going to extend this to open it so we can see what we are doing. So we have the news section part. And this new section part also contains the footer. So that is what we're going to be doing next. So right here we have we're going to have the main container definitely, and then we are going to have three containers. We are going to have one, two, 
and 3. So, inside the first container, I'm going to have definitely the number, the header, and then this is going to have one container each. So, let's just go ahead to create the structure. So, you can go ahead to collapse this, the client area. So, you can collapse it right here. And um, let's go to the news news and um can give you something like news and um footer or news and cta call to action so first we're going to have the main div for the entire container and then we're going to have three divs right here three divs just like that so now that we have that first let's work on the header we're going to have um right here we're going to have a paragraph a better still we can just come here to copy what we need as you can see we already have it right here i'm just going to copy these guys let me just copy this div this entire div i'm going to copy that come back right here and i'm going to replace this first div with what i just copied and i'm going to change this to 03 and this is going to be news that's all we need right here what we just copied right here so you can copy it from here we're just going to save that and um let's see what we have here should have it right there the next thing to do is let me go ahead to target the main div right here and let's give it a class and we'll give it a bg zinc and this time around we are using 900 and don't forget your px as 6 and py as 10 get to save that and um, we have this so we just created this part so now let's work on this one can open this and this is going to be the news section the block section so we're going to create one first then we duplicate it for the remaining four and inside the container as you can see if i should come back right here we have one two three four four divs so i'm just going to create one we're going to have a div so we can just give a space here and um, right here we have the news and cta and here we can give this a quote a, a comment i mean and we have header and um, here we can give a comment as well we have the news items and here we have news item one news item one so right here we're going to have an image img which we're going to use a source and we're going to go to images slash blog one and then we're going to have outside it we're going to have another div to contain the text so this is the we're going to have this news items container so we don't mix things together and this is the news item one so inside the, this div we are going to have a paragraph and an h3 can have a paragraph right there and an h3 so the paragraph is after having something like um, commercial and um, right here you can just copy this and you can paste it right in here so i'm just going to save that so let's come back right here and we have this so let me just inspect this so starting with the image i'm going to come here to the image i'm going to give it a class and you notice it is rounded at the top corners so you can do rounded rounded top that'll be t and um, let's give it md so if i save that and come back right here you notice the top is now rounded so the next thing i want to do is i want to work on this div for these two guys i'm just going to give it a class i'm going to do bg zinc and let's go with 800 and then i can give it a p a p a, uh, a padding all around let's go with a padding all around or something like eight i'm going to save that and uh, we have this padding around which is similar to what we have right there so the next thing now to do is let's target the text i'm just going to come here 
can come here to copy the class here because it's almost the same thing i'm just going to copy come to the paragraph here and i'm going to paste but this time around everything is going to be a package so let's save and um, we have this commercial it's meant to be uppercase and this is not uppercase yet so we have three p's i don't know why i keep making that mistake i'm just going to save it and we have this which is similar to what we have here but then for the font font semi bold and text oriented text let's use text sm and save that and we can manage it like this but i think this is text xs so i'm just going to change this to xs then for this you can copy this as well i just copy this class and we're going to adjust it and um so we need to i think copy that completely i'm just going to copy complete i'm going to come here and i'm going to paste so we have the font font sans font boot text white text um should be something like um let's use text biz or text lg let's go with text lg and um just get rid of this so let's save that and let's see what that looks like so we have this very similar to this and i think for the text i guess to leave it as text fonts extra bold like that so i'm going to save it and we have this which is very similar to what we have right here so i'm just going to go ahead to display this container right here as flex i'm going to place as flex flex call and uh, we're going to give it a gap let's give it a gap of seven i'm going to save and this is looking similar to this so i'm just going to come back right here to reduce the gap to something like six i'm going to save that and boom we have this next thing is how to round the bottom right here so what is responsible for that is um this guy as you can see so we can come here and you can give it rounded b rounded bottom and want it as md we can save that and the bottom is now rounded so this is looking cool so now that we have that you can go ahead to just copy this guy right here but before we copy there's one thing something else to just do straight up so let me close out of this but better still let me go back to inspect i think we're going to do that in desktop mode so let's just continue with what we're doing i'm just going to come here we have the entire container right here like this and i can just copy this guy paste it like um three more times so we have two three four we can save that and now we have all these guys so i'm going to go ahead to change the images so we have one so we have two and um, this is going to be three and this is going to be four so we have that i'm just going to save and we have these guys looking good so the next thing i have to do is i'm going to target the main container for this um, at least items I'm going to give it a class and um this is going to be grid and this is we can use grid you can use flex anyone but i prefer to use grid this is going to be grid and grid calls is going to be one for mobile and let's go with a gap of something like um seven i'm going to save that and we have this gap very similar to what we have right there so i'm just going to increase the gap to eight i'm going to save it and boom we have this so the next thing i'm going to do is you notice there's a space right here and right here we don't really have any space between these two guys so don't forget this entire container and this entire container are both inside this main container so we can go ahead to display this as flex flex call and we can use gap let's give it a gap of something like uh let's go with eight i'm going to save I better still go with a gap of nine or ten let me just go ten you can save that and we have this lovely guy 
so this is looking good as you can see we have this and we have this so now that we've created that the next thing we want to do is to create the last section right here which is inside this same footer so i'm going to come back right here and let's inspect what we have so we're going to have two divs maybe one div and another div or just an image and then we create this then we create this so let's go ahead to do that i'm just going to come back right here to my vs code and i'm going to scroll all the way down and we have it right here so you can just call this cta something so we have cta section and right here we're going to have two divs we're going to have the first div and the second div so the first div is going to contain the first div is going to contain a paragraph a header a paragraph a button so we're going to have p you can use an h2 and uh, another paragraph and we have a button right there so i'm going to come back right here and we have 04 i have zero four dot and right here we have let's talk about your project let's talk about your project and we have another paragraph i'm just going to grab this dummy text and i'm going to paste it right here and then we have a button that says contact so i'm just going to save that and um, right here we're going to have an image so i'm going to do img i'm going to go to our source we're going to go to images and um, i think that should be person main this one right here i'm going to save that and let's see what we have right here so you can just go back to inspect this and um, we have this guy right here so we have everything here so let's start styling it so right here you notice there's a background color of zinc so i'm just going to target the main container here and we're going to give it a bg i'm going to give it a class a bg zinc and it's going to be zinc 800 we're going to have rounded md i'm going to have px padding right and left let's go with seven and um padding top let's just go with uh let's go with seven as well so i'm just going to save that and um, should we have something cool right here so the padding is not showing let's reload that and now we have the padding right there as you can see so i think the padding right here is more so i'm just going to change this to px let's go with px10 and pt10 as well i'm just going to save come back right here and this should look very similar to what we have right here so i think this is close i think this is close and um now that we have that the next thing we want to do is to style these guys as always i can always come here to copy the class for the number i think we have the number right here so you can just come here copy this class and uh, we have it here can paste it and then let's talk about your project so we have that header right there so i can come here to copy this header so we have the news I can copy the header right here and the only thing i'm going to do is most likely just change the um, size i'm going to paste it here i think i didn't copy that completely let's come back right here to copy the header copy to complete get to copy come back right here to the h2 and i'm just going to paste so now that we have that then we have this paragraph so for the paragraph i think we have a paragraph somewhere here i'm just going to come here copy this paragraph copy copy the class and i'm going to paste right there so for the button i'm just going to give it a class and it's going to be bg it's going to be bg zinc and let's go with uh, bg zinc 600 not zinc now this is going to be orange 
600 and um, now that we have that we're going to give it font sans and font semi bold let's go with um let's see if it is uppercase or capitalize so this is capitalize so we're going to do capitalize this is uppercase i mean and do uppercase and let's go with text um md so let's let's go with text lg i mean text lg is 18 pixels so let's save and before i save let me give it a padding px padding top and bottom let's go with a three p padding right and left i mean let's go with a five padding top and bottom py let's go with the three i'm just going to save that and um we should have something cool going on here so we have this i'm just going to come back right here to reduce this guy to something like a 2.5 and this guy should go to something like a 6 or a 7. so i'm just going to make the 7 i'm going to save it and we have this so now that that is looking good i can go ahead to make this guy rounded and it's going to be rounded md so now that we have that we can go ahead to do class flex and this is going to be flex call and we want items items to the center i'm going to save now oh, cool now you notice this guy is not to the center so what we are going to do is we're going to come to the heading we're going to do text text center I'm going to save that let's come back right here and now we have this which is very similar to what we have right here but it seems the padding we gave it is too much so better still let's reduce the font size so i'm going to come to the header instead of text for excel let's go with text to excel i'm going to save that and um, that's looking too small so let's go with 3 excel i'm going to save boom now we have this the next thing to do is since we already displayed this container as gap as um, flex can use gap unless you go to back gap of six you can save and boom we have that as simple as a b c so now that we have that we have this other guy right here and um, since we have both div here and we have another div right here we can display this as flex flex call and we can give it a gap or well, this time around, let's go to gap of eight i'm going to save that and this is looking perfect we just repeated what we have here right here so for this one i think there's something wrong with the button so we need to make it text white i'm going to save that and this is looking good exactly what we have right here we just recreated it here and everything is looking perfect but the only difference right here now is right here you notice the space is more so i'm just going to go ahead to target this div and i'm going to give it a margin to the top so let's go with empty and i'm going to make it 10. i'm going to save let's see what we have right here so perfect this is now looking good so now that we have that done the next thing we want to do now is to make it mobile responsive so first i'm going to click out of this to tablet mode and uh, for the tablet mode should have this i think this is the tablet mode tablet mode start from here and here so we have this and let's work on that so i'm going to click out click out of this as well and enter the tablet mode around 7 40 something so it's something so starting from the top so we have this for the tablet mode so let's work on that i'm going to just collapse this guy collapse this section and uh, i'm going to collapse collapse this so when we need them we're going to open it so we have four sections in total so i'm going to open the first section and this time around we are working on the um responsiveness so for the responsive mode in case you don't know that in um, thing with css if i come to responsive design so they are built for the breakpoint we have sm md lg xl to xl so i'm going to start the breakpoint from md which is 768 pixels so i'm going to come back right here so for this you notice these guys are to the left 
and right here they are to the center so first of all we need to take care of that so i'm just going to come back right here so i think this is what is responsible for that um we have it right here so as you can see we have flex flex call item center so for the md we're going to come here for md we're going to do items start we're going to do item start if i just save now we have the to the start the next thing is to target don't forget we just target on only this one now next is to target the container responsible for these guys the entire content so we're going to come here as well and we're going to do md items start you can save and now boom we just did this but right here you notice this text is a little bit bigger so i can come here to the text which is this patrick and i can do md and this time around we're going to do text 7xl previously we did 6xl i'm going to save that and um should get something bigger right here so now you notice this image is kind of to the center but right here the image is outside there and then the padding right and left is more so we're going to quickly work on that i'm just going to come right here to the entire container here to this class and i'm going to give it in an md this time around we're going to do px instead of px6 let's go with a px of let's say eight i'm going to save and um, let's see now yes similar so I can just go with 10 instead so i'm going to make it 10 and now that i'll make it 10 the next thing i want to do is i'm going to come to the background bg cover and bg center instead of that i'm going to do md i'm going to do bg let's say i want to show i want to show it more to the left so that the image can move and move to the right so let's do bg left and right here bg left i'm going to save it and boom the image has moved and we have the same thing right here so as you can see so this is 774 and this is 774 as well come in so from 7768 7768 yeah so this is looking perfect we just did that so let's come right here this one you notice this is displaying different from what we have right here so we are done with that entire part we can just collapse it back and let's open the second section so for this one the text this div containing the number and the text are displayed side by side and this is the container responsible for it so we have flex 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 call and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to give it for md we're going to have flex row instead of flex call and for md i want to justify between that is going to give enough space between i'm going to save and um now we have this so now that we've done that the next thing we want to do is we want to move this guy to the end so i'm going to target them right here so as you can see we have item center but here but i'm just going to do md and i'm going to do items start i'm going to save now we have the items to the start as you can see this one right here as well so for this i think we are cool we have exactly what we have right here i think we are cool so we can go ahead to work with this and also adjust the uh, margin the padding right and left of this so i'm going to target the entire container right here which is this as you can see i'm going to do md and i want px as 10 I'm going to save that and boom we have this the next thing we want to do is we need to rearrange how these guys are displayed i'm going to come back right here as you can see we have grid calls one so for md i'm going to do grid calls three i'm going to save it and this is going to display three columns for us we have one two three and here as well we have one two three but one, one thing I want to do next is you notice the gap right here is too much and these guys are not displaying to the center. 
i'm just going to come right here to this guy to this to this um i think right here we have for each container we have a px so we have padding around of 10 so we can just come right here for md we want padding we want px as something like let's say five and for md we want py or something like let's say um eight so i'm going to save that and um, i think this is looking better same with what we have right here so i'm just going to go ahead to for this tech header i want text center text center so in case it gets smaller it's going to be to the center so we have text center so what i'm just going to do is i'm going to copy what i just did i'm just going to copy this i'm going to oh, let's copy this i'm going to paste it for the rest one two and then i'm going to copy the text center right here i'm going to copy and i'm going to come to this part that'll be one and um two so let's save and boom we have this guy which is very similar to what we have right here but one thing you now notice is when i hover over these guys there is a kind of the color changed and one thing not work on again is the gap the gap is too much so i'm going to come right here so right here we have gap of 10 for md i'm going to change the gap to something like um let's go with a five i'm going to save and now we should have something perfect this is very similar to what we have right there and now we have this so the next thing to do is to work on the hoover and all what you're seeing the interaction we are having right here so i'm going to come back right here and i'm going to work on the hoover so to make the hoover effective first i'm going to give it a class a class of group right there and on hoover or you can do on hover right here i want the pg color to change so let me come back right here i want the pg color to change to zinc and this should be uh, not zinc orange and this should be 600 so i'm just going to save that and let's see what we have right here so on hover nothing is changing yet so we need to target the remaining guys as you can see this is now changing or better so let's just remove the group because there's no point targeting these guys so far you are inside the item you have hovered over everything so let me just remove this i'm going to use the group somewhere else somewhere down the line so now we have this and this is looking perfect but this is darker so let me just increase this shade to something like 700 i'm going to save that and um, let's see let's wait for that to load and we have this now this is too fast i'm going to change duration as you can see the hover of this is kind of slow so i'm just going to change the duration of the hover and i'm going to do duration let's go with the duration of um, 200 i'm going to save that and right here it's too fast so let me go to load now this is perfect so this is perfect and i'm just going to come here to copy the class i'm going to come here i'm going to paste one and um, right here as well two so i'm going to save it and now we have this this is perfect as you can see so the next thing i want to work on now is this four guys i'm going to come back right here and we have them here so currently they are displayed as flex call so i'm just going to change it from flex call to for md i want it as uh, flex row and i want md as justify space between i'm going to save that and we should have this guy displayed like this which is as simple as abc that's all we need to do and now we have this 
so now that we've done that and we've gotten this i think that's all we need to come down right here and this time around as you can see this is displaying four 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 and this item should be to the end so first i'm going to just come here let's collapse this one and let's open the third section so first i'm going to do md so we're going to have md right here and um i want the px as 10 padding right and left as 10 so now that i've done that for the grid course we're going to do md and the grid course is going to be four so now that we have it as four let's just save so we can see what we've done and now we have it as four right here as you can see so the next thing we want to do is as you can see this text is to the center i want to move it to the end right there so i'm just going to come here to the text item right here as you can see we have item center so for md i'm just going to do items start and um i think that is all we need to do i'm just going to save and we should have other items to the start so right here we are having text center so for md i'm going to have text start i'm going to save and uh, we should have this guy right here so now we have this and that just solved the problem we have right here so this is looking good and um the next thing we want to work on now is going to be this part so for this as you can see we have two columns for the items i'm just going to come here you can collapse this now and um try to see you can collapse this and you open the last one so right here we have two columns i can just go to the grid the post display items right here this is it so this is the container this is the container for each post this container responsible for everything right here so i can just come here and i can do for md we want grid calls as two and i'm going to if i save it as you can see we have flex flex call flex item center so for md i want flex i want items start and let's just save that and now we should have exactly what we have right here to this part and we have this as simple as a b c so now that we have that you notice when i hover over this one as you can see as i hover the image increase and then there's a kind of box shadow and regardless of where i hover if i hover here the same thing if i hover over the text the same thing so this is where we're going to use the group so i'm going to come back right here to this guy so we want to group all these guys the image this everything we want to make them a group such that whenever any element is hovered over everything um you know changes transitions so i'm going to come to this div i'm going to give it a class right there and i'm going to give it group on hover let's see what happens on hover on hover as you can see there's a kind of box shadow so on hover i want to give it a shadow let's go with shadow let's go with shadow black let's go with shadow black and on hover we want shadow and let's go with shadow lg so i'm just going to save that and let's see what that looks like right here so nothing is changing yet because you know we did it as group and as you can see this is now reflecting and what i'm going to do is i'm going to increase the shadow to something like a 2xl a 2xl i'm going to save it come back right here and um we have this okay this is better now so aside this let's target this the entire container right here don't forget we're changing everything to px of 10 so i'm going to do md px should be 10 and um, now that we've done that and we've done the shadow and everything you notice on hover the image increased right here the image increased so to do that you're going to come here and to do that you're going to do group hover you're going to do group hover 
and we want to scale it to let's go with um 110 i'm going to save it let's come back right here and um let's see what we have as you can see the image is scaling right there but then it's scaling outside so what are we going to do is we're going to target the container responsible for this entire container and we're going to set it to hidden overflow is going to be hidden so even when it zooms the zooming is going to be inside the container so let's wait for that to load i think oh not hidden so it's going to be overflow i'm going to add i'm going to have overflow hidden so if you use just hidden it's going to hide the entire stuff but it's meant to be overflow hidden so let's wait for that to reload as you can see this is still zooming but then it's no longer zooming outside so let me just reduce this guy let me give it a transition so i'm going to give it a duration of um i like going with duration of 200 and um, even for the box shadow i like going for a duration duration of 200 so everything is going to look seamless i'm going to save that come back right here wait for that to load i'm just going to reload this guy i think this is still slower but this is kind of faster so i'm going to increase the duration to something like let's go with a 500 let's go with the duration of 500 and let's see what that looks like i'm going to save come back right here to see what we have and um, i think this is now better this is better so we just achieved that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy all the class i created and i'm going to move it over to this part so let me just reduce the scale of this image to something like um one 105 i'm going to save so instead of scaling all the way up we're going to have something very minimal and this is looking perfect so let's go ahead to copy this class on this div i'm going to copy the class for the div i'm going to control z let's copy everything right here i'm going to copy come to this div paste this div paste and uh, this div just paste so now that we have that don't forget don't forget we also gave the image some classes so just copy everything replace what we have right here paste and um, same thing with this paste and same thing with this ctrl z i'm going to replace this guy and paste so now that we've done that i'm just going to save it and let's see what we have so far so let's come back right here and as you can see everything is now giving us a kind of transition so lastly we have this personally i think i prefer it this way you can leave yours this way if you want i think i prefer this way but if you want to display it this way all you need to do is display it as flex so i'm going to come back right here to this last guy as you can see this div is responsible for both the image and this guy and uh, for md I can just go let's say flex row i'm going to save as you can see we now have this guy this way so what you want to do now is you want to display this guy as items to the start so i'm going to do md items item starts and um instead of text center this is going to be md text start and same with this as well md text start so i'm going to save that come back right here and um, boom we have everything to the start the next thing i want to do is i want to give this guy some padding so i'm going to target this div responsible for the content and you can come here and can give it md padding button of let's go with something like 
14 or oh, let's go with 10 i'm just going to save and um, this should give us some padding to the bottom and i'm not seeing any padding to the bottom we have we have this guy but that's still let's go with margin to the bottom oh i gave it might to the top mb it's meant to be mb margin to the bottom we can save mt or pt is going to be top so let's just give it mb mb is going to be margin bottom wow mt is going to be margin top so now we have this which is very similar to what we have right here and um the next thing is we want to move this image down so i'm going to come here and um for this image don't forget these guys are flex can come here we can give it a class and we can do self there's a class that is self can do self come in so you can do self and you can do self end so this is going to push the image to the bottom so self end i'm going to save that and this should push the image to the bottom as you can see just push the image to the bottom and we have exactly what we have right here the other thing you can do is just go ahead to work on the padding so i'm just going to come here to this entire container so i'm going to give it empty and for p p top it's only p padding top you're going to give it i'm not going to give the padding bottom because of the image that need to touch the base so for the padding top can just go with um right here we are using padding top of 10 can just go with let's say 16 and just save and for this guy that we gave a uh, margin bottom right here i'm trying to locate it this is this okay mb 10 so instead of 10 let's go with um 16 as well or just 14 i'm going to save and we just made this mobile responsive for tablets so the next one we're going to do is to make it responsive for desktop as you can see what we have right here is exactly what we have right here as you can see this is looking good so I should come down we have this and if i should come to tablet mode we have this so this is looking perfect so the next thing we want to do is what what should happen when we enter the lg mode so lg start from 1025 as you can see it right here lg start from 1024 so currently we're on 1025 so i'm just going to come up to 102 something something and we have this and that means this needs to get bigger for lg and that is what we're going to be working on next so for the lg as you can see this um header is kind of big this is bigger and this is smaller so we need to work on that so let's start, um let's start with the euro section and then we're going to move our way all the way down to this part so i'm just going to come here and um, i'm going to come back to my code right here so i'm going to collapse the last um section right here i'm going to open the first section which is our hero section and i'm going to locate the patrick bradley so we're going to say something like from lg we want the text um to be something like 8 excel let's try 8x 8 excel that's 96 pixels i'm going to save as you can see md is 7 excel so i'm going to save that and um, let's see what we have right here think from lg which is what i just did so in case i'm just didn't reload like this as well just go to your view open your terminal again and you can see our code is no longer being monitored so just run npm run watch so that everything can be compiled again and we can see it live so waiting for that to open up and um this is working fine now so i'm just going to go ahead to save it i'm going to save again and now we have this so as you can see this is extending way too out i'm just going to go ahead to change this to 9 xl let's go with 9 xl that's 128 pixels i'm going to save we to come back right here and um 
you should see this now this is exactly what we want but one thing you notice is the text has come a little bit out so we need to work on that and um i think we have something like text center right here we have a text center and i'm going to come here and say something like from md we just want the text as stats we want it from md not lg so that even for our tablet can have it towards the beginning and this is what we just achieved we just achieved what we have right here and it's as simple as that so i'm going to come all the way down right here and um, right here we have this this is looking cool with this as you can see and right here as well we have this this is looking cool as well and right here we have this and um here we have this so we need to change this to what we have here so to achieve that i'm going to come to the i think this is this is the first second and third so i'm going to come to the third section right here i can collapse this and this is the third one i'm going to come to the third section and as you can see we have the main div right here the main container and then inside the main container we have these two containers and don't forget we set the main container to flex and currently this is flex column so from lg we can say we want flex as row something like this and i'm just going to save that come back right here and as you can see we just achieved exactly the same results we have right here as you can see so what i'm going to do next is i'm just going to go ahead to let's reduce the padding of these guys as you can see this comp is compressing the text too much but first let's work on the text we have right here so i'm going to come back right here to our clients and um, from lg i want to change the font size so i'm going to do something like text let's go with um 6xl i'm just going to save that and we have this so the next thing i want to work on is right here you notice um this this um header is tagged over the other so we're going to do the same for this i'm going to come back right here and i'm going to locate the header right here and you can do something like um, from lg we want the width of this as one over two so we want to occupy 50 percent of the available space and uh, we have this so for this for the entire container we can go ahead to do from lg we want to justify between that we want to put equal space between them i'm going to save and um, we have this but one thing you realize is these guys are being compressed too much and that is because of the padding we have right and left so i'm just going to quickly work on that i'm going to come back right here so if you look at this you see the px is eight, um, 10 i'm going to reduce the px to 6 and for py to something like um 16 so i'm just going to copy what we have right here i'm going to copy and let's replace these guys and um, i think we have the same thing here so i'm just going to save and see what that looks like i'm going to come back right here and uh, we have this this is exactly what we want to achieve as you can see it's very similar to what we have here but another thing you notice is most of these items are not displayed to the center so we can come here we can come back right here and we can display this item as flex we can display it as flex call and we can do items center and um, justify center so we need to add this so that the um, images the logos can appear to the center of the container so i'm just going to save and let's see what we have so right now we have this to the center and this is not to the center yet so we have oh i didn't copy the flex and the flex so we have um flex flex call items center so let's save that we have item center right here already so let me just carry out this we have flex flex call we have item center we have justify center 
so i'm going to save that and now our items are now to the center but this is looking shorter than this so i'm just going to come here and let's see what we can do about that so for the py let's change this to 15 let's try 15 i'm going to save okay this is a little bit longer i'm just going to load i think i'm just going to go back with 16 let's control z control z i'm going to save that and we have this this is looking a little big a little bit too long but we're just going to use it like that i'm going to work on the gap instead so i'm just going to come back right here i'm going to copy this entire class and i'm going to replace the rest so i'm going to come here get to paste so i'm going to save and i'm going to come back right here and now everything is looking like what we have right here as you can see this is looking perfect so the next thing i want to do is let me just go ahead to reduce the gap and um, so everything will be perfect or we can just leave it this way and um, let's come here see there's a lot of gap here you can come here to this div as you can see we have flex flex calls item center and uh, we have item start but now we can do um, from lg we want to justify justify center let's save this can move to the middle right here as you can see we need to use first center and we just achieved what we have right here we have it here and for the padding i think we need to work on the py i think same with this as well the padding here is more so let's quickly work on the padding i'm going to come back right here starting with this i think the padding of this one is looking good already so let's move to the second so we need to work on the padding of this as well so i'm just going to come to the second let me collapse this i'm going to come to the second section main the main container and i can do something like from lg we want the py as um i think currently the py is 10 let's give it a py of something around 100 you can go with 24 24 pixels i'm going to save that and i'm going to do the same for this we want the py from lg on the py as 24 that'll be 24 times 4 that'll be 96 pixels i'm going to save as well and when we come here as you can see the gap the gap is now more as you can see it right here the gap is now more and uh, we have this lovely guy so this is looking perfect you can go ahead to increase the padding more as you can see the padding here is still more but i'm just going to keep mine this way so i'm going to work on the last parts and right here we have this which is looking good you don't have to do anything so to make this come to the middle i'm just going to come here i'm going to locate the last section right here and from lg i want the margin bottom as zero and then we can go ahead to justify these items to the center so i'm just going to come here and i can say something like from lg i want um these items i want um them as justify just five center so this comes to the center i'm just going to save and boom we have this so now i think we have too much space to the top i think we have too much space to the top i'm just going to get rid of those space i'm going to come back right here and um let's see we have gap six we have um margin top which is what i've removed i removed the margin top already and uh, we have padding top we have px right here we have padding top we have all this so i'm just going to come here and i've saved from lg i want to remove the pt as zero i'm going to save that and um that should solve that should solve the problem we have and this is looking exactly like what we have right here so now i just optimized the home page the landing page and this is looking perfect now let's go ahead to check what we have for the excel screen this is the lg so for the excel screen notice the moment i move out we have more space the only difference is the space so let's do that the only difference is the space so we have to do that as well i'm going to come right here and everything is looking good so i'm just going to come here starting with the top 
I'm going to come back right here. I'm going to collapse this. I'm going to collapse this. I'm going to collapse this. So I can come right here. And that is, I can say from, let me come to responsive mode. Um, responsive, from responsive design. That should be Excel. As you can see from 1 to 80 pixels. So I'm just going to come here for, to the header and I can come here. This is something from Excel. We want the PY that is padding right and left as um, let's go with 28. That's 112. And we want the, let's just leave it this way. I'm going to save it. And um, let's come here. We should see that in action. Oh, PY is button, um, top and bottom. We want PX right and left. So I'm just going to save and um, let's see now we have this another thing I want to do is this text is getting too long so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make it occupy only 50 percent of the total available space so i'm going to target the, the this text this text part the content part right here so you can target the content part right here this is the have responsible for it or you just target this header straight up so i can come here and say something like from um excel we want the width as one one over two so it can occupy only 50 percent of the available space so we have this which is exactly what we have right here this is looking good so i'm going to scroll down and um we have this so the only thing the only different the only thing we need to work on is the space right and left so i'm just going to come here to the second to the second section I think we have it right here and i can do from excel we want the px as 28 i'm going to save and we have this which is actually very similar to what we have right here the only difference is the padding top bottom is kind of more here and the padding right here is less so you can go ahead to just adjust that and um right here as you can see i think we see how we need to get more space here to get more space right here so i'm just going to come here i'm going to increase this to something like 32 this is going to be 32 and this is going to be 32 so i'm going to save i'm going to save that come back right here and um going to reload and boom we now have this this is way better so the next thing to work on is these guys as you can see we have some pad right and left i'm going to come here to them i think we have it right here that should be the second section so we have it here and um we have them right here so we can go ahead to give this guy a px a padding right and left so we can say from excel we want to give it a padding right and left of let's go with something like um 16 or 14 let's go with 14 i'm going to save that and um she have something right here so you should check here let's check the normal padding right and left so we have padding around of 16 normally so we can say px we want something like um 20. so i'm going to save it and we should have this which is exactly what we have right here so now that we have that you can go ahead to work on the padding of this guy but i'm just going to leave it the way it is i'm going to scroll down and also we need to work on the padding of this guy i'm just going to come here and i'll say from excel i want the padding padding right and left as 32 that will be 32 times 4 that will be 128 pixels i'm going to save and we have this so i'm going to come down and i'm going to do the same for this as well i'm just going to come here to the last part and um, i think we have our client section i've done that and i'm going to come to the last part that is the footer part the news and the footer part locate the main container from excel i want padding right and left as um 32 as well i'm going to save that and we have this which is very similar to this the only difference now is this is bigger and this is kind of smaller so i'm going to quickly work on that i'm going to come to the to the header 
let's talk about your project let's talk about your project as you can see right this is bigger so i'm just going to come here and i'm going to say something like from excel we want the text size to something like let's try 5 xl i'm going to save and let's reload and we have this boom we just achieved exactly the same thing you notice the padding also is more so i'm just going to come here to to this guy to this guy right here and i'm going to say something like from excel i want the px as 16 i'm going to save so we have nice padding right and left this is looking good another thing i want to work on is i'm going to target this guy don't forget we changed um you can do like from excel from excel let's give it a py let's give it a py or something like 12. i'm going to save so we have this. this is looking way better now we just replicated what we have right here to this part but one thing we need to work on now is going to be this um news part right here this is four and right here we're having it as two two so to achieve that just come to the grid right here grid grid calls one and for md we have grid calls two for excel or from from excel we can say we want the grid calls four so we're going to have four columns i'm just going to save that and boom now we have four columns exactly what we have right here so we are basically done with this page the next page we need to work on is going to be the blog page and that is actually very simple to work on so first let's close out of this let's check the um, last responsive mode the, the large screen we have this looking good and this also is looking good as you can see but you notice the space here is more the gap right here is more so i'm just going to come here to work on the gap and also the padding right here is more so let's work on that i'm going to come to the second section right here between these guys so currently the gap is five you can see something like from excel we want to gap as something like um let's go with 10. i'm going to save and um, this is exactly the same thing so the next one to work on is we can work on the padding of these guys so i'm just going to come here and that will be this you can put it at the beginning you can put it anywhere so i'm just going to do something like um let's see we have px and py so we can just do can just give it a single padding you can say from excel we want the padding we want the padding as um let's go with um let's go with 16 i'm going to save that and boom we have this so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to come here to copy these guys and i'm going to put it in everything so right here i'm going to paste ctrl v give it your space ctrl v space i think that's all i'm just going to save and boom we have this the next thing to work on is this guy and um that is right here so for excel we gave it a px of um 20 from excel we give it a P P um, px of 20 but this time around instead of excel i think i'm just going to go ahead to make this two excel if i should come to responsive as you can see we have two excel i'm just going to do two excel and i want px uh something like let's say 28 I'm going to save that and um, we should have something cool so we have this this is very similar to what we have right here and i'm going to come down this is looking perfect as well and right here we have this as well right here we have this but you notice the image of this guy is way to the top so we need to work on that so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to come all the way down to the main container for these two guys and i'm going to set overflow overflow to hidden that is when everything is outside this box it is going to be hidden then i'm going to come to the image right here and i'm going to give it a class 
and i'm going to give it a negative margin so i'm going to give it a margin top from um, 2xl from 2xl i'm going to give it a margin top of negative so i'm going to give the margin top of let's try 100 so i'm going to go something like um 24 to give it a negative margin we have to add a negative right at the beginning that's how to give a negative margin i'm just going to save that and let's see boom we have this very similar to what we have right there and that is all we need to do and everything is looking perfect so let's go to the blog page before we go to blog page let me go ahead to inspect this guy one more time to make sure everything is fine as you can see everything is looking good come down we have a nice responsive mode and everything is looking awesome so now that we have that as you can see this text is now to the center on mobile so i'm going to come back right here to the top way to the top and um that should be under um this text i am a writer video blogger so i'm going to do um for normal screen we want text center but then from md we want text start so i'm going to save boom that solved the problem and uh, we're going up it's looking good it's looking good everything's looking good i think we need to solve something right here so we can see from from excel instead of lg from excel if i should come all the way to the title right here as as you can see from um from we, we made it excel so we can change this guy to lg from lg we want to occupy only 50 percent of the entire screen and that will solve the problem so this is looking good perfect so now that we have that we can go ahead to work on the blog page so i'm just going to come here to click on the blog and we have this for our blog so let's quickly work on that we can close this page and don't forget from the start we created a pages folder and right in there we have our blog so i'm just going to come here to copy the header but that's still let me just create my own boilerplate i'm just going to come here create a boilerplate i'm going to call this blog and um, i'm going to link to my css so i'm going to do link css and that should be in css folder star um, css folder but you notice the blog page is inside another folder so first we need to step out of that folder we need to step out of the blog folder so we are going to have dot dot slash css slash star dot css so this dot dot means stepping back so we're going to step out of the pages folder then locate the css folder and find the star dot css so i'm going to save and um i think i think we're basically done right here we don't need any icon so let's see what the blog page looks like and i'm just going to let me test this first to make sure everything is working fine cool everything is working fine we already created the path from the start if you go to your package your um the windows config.js as you can see we said locate the build folder look at the pages and any file with html in the pages folder so we are all good so i'm going to come back right here to the blog and as you can see the blog is looking different so for the first one if i should come here to me as you can see this is transparent header but right here this is not a transparent header the header is having its own color but first of all i'm going to come here to copy the header actually i'm going to come to the index.html and i'm just going to copy the entire hero section i'm going to copy instead of the entire hero section let's just copy this guy the header part so i'm going to copy this div i'm going to copy the header come back right here to my blog.html i'm going to paste the header i'm going to save it i'm going to open it with live server and uh, we are not seeing anything yet that's because the color is uh, the background color is still white so we can just come here and we can set um bg zinc and we can go with 800 i'm going to save that and um, we have this 
so for the logo we need to work on the part of the logo as well so first we need to step out locate the images folder and then the logo.svg i'm going to save that and boom we have this so i can go ahead to inspect it so we work on mobile first so same here i'm going to inspect and we are looking good so the first thing i want to work on is going to be the padding i'm going to come here to the div and i'm going to give it a px of something like um seven and a py of something like 10. so i'm going to save that and we have this so that's looking good so now we want to work on this particular aspect we're going to have just a div and um, the div is going to contain another div for these guys and another div for this guy so i'm going to come here and i'm going to create a div and we're going to have a div inside our div and maybe probably we just have our h2 then inside the first div we're going to have home we're going to have a paragraph um or we can just use span a span a an icon and another span so we can do span and then after the span we're going to have an icon so you can come right here to search for chevron and you can just go with any of this guy i'm going to select this first i'm going to copy the script i'm going to paste it right here and um, secondly i'm going to copy the icon class i'm going to come right here i'm going to put it here and then we're going to have another span so the first span is going to be home and the second span is going to be it's going to be blog so i'm going to save that so we have them right here so this h2 is going to be blog as well i'm just going to come to the main div right here and i'm going to give it a class and this is going to be a class of bg zinc and this is going to be 900 so i'm just going to save that and don't forget your px is 7 and then the py i just go with something like um 12. i'm going to save that and we have this so first and foremost i'm going to come here to style this guy so we have orange and the rest are white so i'm just going to come here i'm going to give it a class so it's going to be font sans is fonts um semi bold or medium we just go with semi bold and we can go with text xs or text let's go with text x sm first i'm going to do uppercase let's just save that and texts orange text orange 600 let's save and come right here we have that x sm is too much so i'm going to change this to xs we can save we have this so i think this is better but i think we have to change this guy to bold i'm going to save we have this so this is looking perfect so for this um this is going to be class this is going to be just be text white that's all we need to do i'm just going to save it we have this looking good and for the last one this is going to be class i'm going to have font sans font bold text xs uppercase and this will be text white I'm going to save and boom we have this as well so i think i'm going to change this guy to text sm sm and same goes for this as well this should be text sm i'm going to save and um, this is looking good so the next we want to do is to move it to the center i'm just going to come here to this guy and i'm going to do something like um class and this should be flex flex on the slate as flex rule because they are 
in row and you can do um items you can do justify you can just justify center so we can save that and now we have these guys to the center and we can give it a gap we can go with a gap of something like um let's go to gap of three i'm going to save we have the gap and the next thing now to do is we need to do items center as well so everything is centralized we can save and boom everything is now to the center the next thing we want to work on is going to be the blog so i'm going to reduce the gap to two i'm going to come to the blog and it's going to be a class definitely we're going to have font sans and font is going to be bold or we go with extra bold i think bold will do the trick we're going to have font bold we're going to have texts let's go with um text lg or excel have 20 pixels i'm going to have it as capitalize and text white so let's save and uh, we have this so this is not looking good yet so we need to text bold font sans so let's change this to something like 3xl i'm going to save and i think we need to work on the bold so we can do extra bold we can save oh cool this is very similar to what we have right there so now that we have that we've done the issue we've done this there we can go ahead to display this as flex and this time around it's going to be flex column because they are stuck over another and we're going to do um items items center i'm going to save that i'm going to have this guy to the center but then we need to give it a gap so i can go ahead to do gap let's give it a gap of five i'm going to save and we have a gap of five as simple as that so for this part i can just come right here to my index.html don't forget we have a blog section right here so i'm going to copy this div for the blog because we're going to do the same thing i'm just going to copy it come back right here and um this is going to be our blog and i'm just going to before i save it i'm going to come to the main container now this will not be the main container this is going to be bg sync and that should be 900 i'm going to save it and um, we have this now the image has scattered and that's because of the parts so we need to come back right here to specify the image part so first we need to step out add that and that's all we need to do step out dot dot slash we have dot dot slash and um, we have dot dot slash as well i'm just going to save it and now we have these guys so the next thing we want to do is let's go ahead to add two more posts we get to i'm going to copy and paste i'm going to paste and this time around is going to be blog five and this is going to be blog six so i'm going to save that and now we should have six blog posts so what i'm going to do is i'm going to target the main div right here i can give it px7 and py we can go with 12 i'm just going to save and now we have this which is exactly what we have right here so let's go to the tablet mode i'm going to come down to lg this and same with this as well i'm going to come down to lg and um, this is looking good so for anything above 7 60 something is going to take this shape 763 okay this is looking good even for the tablet this is looking awesome as you can see i can just go ahead to change the width of this guy and do something like from md we want the px as 10 i'm going to save and now this is looking way better 
So if I should keep going, 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 going. As you can see, the block became bigger and this is now three. So if I should come all the way up, I'm going to come here and instead of um, MD as three, we have, we have this. We have grid calls four. So from LG, we're going to have grid calls as three. And MD is still going to remain two. I'm just going to save that. And um, I'm going to reload. And now we have it as three. Then we want this blog bigger. So I'm going to come right here to the H2. We can say from LG, we want text as um, let's go with um, 7XL. I'm going to save it. Or let's still go with something like 9XL or 8XL. Let's go with 9. I'm going to save. That should be, should be 8. I'm going to save. So now we have this. But another thing I want to work on is the padding right and left. So we're going to target the main container for the blog right here. And uh, we're going to give it from lg we want the px padding right and left or something like um 32 we're just going to save and we have exactly what we have right here we have it here and if i should click out this is displaying wheel as well click out this is displaying wheel as well as you can see but the only problem now is the header so we need to work on the header i'm just going to come here to inspect and for the header from lg we have the header right here from lg we want px as um let's go with 32 as well let's get to save and boom we have this so if i should click out this is looking perfect as you can see this is looking perfect and um let's go ahead to just add the anchor tags so we have the this me is going to since we're in the blog page first we need to step out of the block folder dot dot step out of the block folder and locate the index.html and then for this we're just going to leave it as that i'm going to save it same for the home page for the home page we're going to locate the link as well right here we have the me the me is going to be the home page and for the blog we need to locate the pages we need to locate the pages and uh, we need to locate the blog.html and i'm going to save it and everything should be working fine right now so if i should click on me it should take me to the home page if i should click on blog it should take me to the blog page but as you can see this menu is not going anywhere so i'm just going to come back right here for the uh for this we can put it in an a tag so let's just come here and um I wrap this in an a tag right there i just close this here we have an a tag and you can have href you can have it as this for the home page but then for the let me just copy everything we have here but then for the blog page we should have it as so don't forget to work on the path back dot dot step out of the um pages look at the images and right here this should lead to the home page so we need to step out as well dot dot and locate the index.html i'm going to save i'm going to save and if i should come here this take me home come back to blog and this should take me home as well and that is all now we've built a full functioning portfolio website using only the wind css you can decide to just upload this directly to your host or decide to maybe convert it to a wordpress theme depending on what you want to do with it but then in the next video i'm going to teach you how to move this project from your local machine to live server maybe you are using apache you are using a my host name chip or whatever host you are using i'm going to show you how to move it and also i'm going to show you how to deploy it to netlify for free using git and github in this video i'm going to teach you how to deploy a website built with tailwind css 
to cpanel and also i'm going to show you how to use vs code git and get up together to deploy a website built with tailwind css to either netlify or vsl so this website was built was built in the previous episode using tailwind css for those of you following the series and i'm going to be deploying it in this particular episode so i'm going to come back to my vs code as you can see this is my work environment and i'm going to quickly go over my file structure so i have the tailwind css modules the input.css packages in and the tailwind config files everything inside my root folder and then i created another folder which contains all my build the css the images the app css tailwind app css we have the images the pages and the index.html so to deploy these to um cpanel the only thing you need is going to be this folder the content inside this build folder you are not going to need all this so i'm going to show you an example quickly so i'm going to come to my file i'm going to locate um the work folder right here so i have it here this is it right here as you can see we have the build and all this so i'm just going to click on the build i'm going to copy it move it out to my downloads i'm just going to paste it here to my downloads and in case you are wondering how you can get this I'm going to leave a link in the description below to my github where you can download it so when you get to this page this is where you want to download the portfolio you can just click on it and to take you to a page where you can click on download and you'll be able to be able to download the project so that is not for this i'm just going to close that i'm going to come back right here so once you have it downloaded just locate open it locate the build folder and you're going to see it right here so if i should go ahead to open my build folder and i click on the index.html i right click and I click on open with uh, maybe Google Chrome. As you can see, the website still opened, despite the fact that we've moved it out of the Tailwind CSS work environment to my downloads. And this is just only the folder. So for those of you wondering how Tailwind CSS works, if you look at this, whenever you're building your website with Tailwind CSS, and for those of you who follow the series, you notice i'm always running npm run watch or npm run build that is to watch my project so all these classes we're using right here are being compiled to the output.css right here and when you connect your project you connected your index.html to the output css not the wind input css so if you just scroll all the way down all the classes you'll be using are being compiled to real css right here so you can see them right here so even if you separate the build project from the tailwind modules your project will still display fine so now that we have this let me just close this now that we have this right here i'm going to open it i'm going to control a i'm going to right click and i'm going to click on add to archive make sure you have um, a zipping software on your windows computer personally i'm using WinRAR, so i'm just going to come to Z select zip i mean i'm going to select zip i want it to be a zipped folder and i'm going to click on ok so now that i have a zip go to your cpanel you can close this personally i'm using spantrix spantrix is a web hosting company so for those of you using shared hosting whichever host you are using locate the control panel for those of you using um, namecheap hostigator godaddy or whatsoever um, shared host you are using personally i'm using spantrix and this is cpanel so come to your file manager right here locate your public html you can upload it directly to your public html if you want to be on your main domain name but since this is a tutorial i have a subdomain already so i'm going to upload it to my subdomain as you can see this directory is empty the subdomain is q.intervals.com i'm going to click on upload then i'm going to select the zipped file so i'm going to come to my downloads don't forget i separated the build folder I'm going to open it and the zipped folder i zipped all this i'm just going to select it and i'm going to click on open now this has uploaded i'm going to click on go back and we have the zipped folder right here i'm going to select that and i'm going to look for extract so i want it extracted right here so we have extract here i'm going to click on extract I want you to extract inside my subdomain right here so i'm going to click on extract files we have everything extracted and if i should just reload let me just reload this page but better still let me just come right here and uh, 
tower screen so we have it right here as you can see we've extracted it i can go ahead to delete the build folder i'm just going to click on delete skip trash and just confirm so if i should go ahead to visit the subdomain the website should be re um, reachable i'm going to go to skill.towers.com and let's see if we're going to see our website as you can see it's as simple as that so normally you want to use F ftp or sftp to move the file so this is just a quick way let's assume the time we want to keep using Twin css to update the website you can use Twin css you can use um ftp through c partner you can watch a video on that on ftp so create an ftp account which is going to connect directly to your computer your file manager and once you want to move you just open your ftp and move only the folders to the ftp and it's going to be updated on your main website so it's as simple as that deploying thing with css project to live server using cpanel or shared host so we are done with the cpanel aspect now let's focus on the netlify so i'm going to come back right here and i'm going to search for netlify let's click it i'm going to search for vassal i'm going to click it so this is netlify and vassal Netlify and Vassel can be used to host your personal project. You can also use it to host robust web application. So you need to create an account. But before you create an account, you need to create a GitHub account. So just go to GitHub. Just search for GitHub. You can click on this. And that will take you to GitHub page. Then you can click on sign up if you don't have a GitHub account. If you have a GitHub account, just click on sign in. So after you've created your GitHub account, you need to come back right here to netlify and sign up when you click on sign up to take you to a page and you need to sign up with your github same thing with this one i'm going to click on sign up and right here as you can see saying i should sign up with github so click on sign up with github this is going to connect you automatically to your logged in github account and you sign up you do the same for this as well connect with github and the same thing will happen and once you connect with github and you have your account open it can prompt you to you know import project from github you can go ahead to enable it and have everything set up but this is the process open a github account log into your github account go to netlify go to livesell connect your github account by signing up with your github account so it's as simple as that so once you do that you are going to have an account and this is this are empty account right here as you can see this is my netlify account and this is my vsell account these are all empty accounts and this is my github account so i'm just going to come back to the home so this is my github account so once you have that once you have that set the next thing you want to do is you want to install git on your computer so just search for git git download come to download git scm you want to download for windows if you're using mac download for mac if you're using linux or unix download for those as well you want to download for windows click on download for windows and right here you are going to select the one for your computer if you are using 32 bit go with 32 bit if you are using 64 bit go with 64 bit you don't want to download the portable version you want to go with the stand alone installer so click on the one you need you are going to download it after downloading it install it like you install every other software just keep clicking on next 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 install next 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 until you get to the final stage and click on install so just use the default settings to install your git so once you have git installed i'm going to close this i'm going to come back to my vs code right here where i'm working i'm going to open my terminal i can just open the index.html so this place will be blank so i'm going to open my terminal go to view terminal once you have your git um github everything installed you've created visual accounts you've created um no notify account you've created a github account you've installed git on your computer just come right here and type in git dash dash version to check the version of git on your computer as you can see the version of git on my computer is git version 2.39.1 windows blah 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 if you don't have git installed on your computer you're going to get an error right here so now that we have that the next thing you want to do is you want to configure your git you want to configure your git account so i'm going to quickly run over that now so to do that you can just click on your windows icon right here you're going to see the git command line so if i click on that 
that should open up the git command line right here for me so i'm just going to make this full screen so you can see what i'm doing so right here we're going to configure configure the username and the email address of the git user so to do that just type in git config and dash dash global and you want to type in username user.name not username user.name your double quotes and type in your username i'm just going to call this moses med and i'm going to click on enter so that is going to create the username of my git for me and then the next thing you want to do is you want to do the same for email so i'm going to do git config dash dash global user.email and you want to type in your email so i'm just going to use my generic email So we have medamsimosis at gmail.com and I'm going to click on enter. So that is going to create both the username and the email account for me. So once you do that, you can just close and um, you can come right here, right here to just, let's say reload, reload your file or better still just close your VS code and restart. I'm just going to do that. I'm going to come here, search for VS code. I'm going to click on open and now everything should be working fine so now that we've done that we have our terminal opened right here we're still going to go ahead to type in git version to see if everything is working fine um right here inside vs code as well so let's wait for that and right here you can do git version and boom we have our git version right there so after you've done that come back to your um, account to your um github account you want to come to repositories and you want to create a new repository for this project i'm going to click on new type in the name of the repository i'm just going to call this personal i'm just going to call it personal site or patrick personal site any name you want to call it and right here you can make it either public or private if it is private that means nobody is going to have access to your code but if it is public anybody can view the code on github so I'm just going to leave it as public and I don't need a read a readme file. I'm just going to leave everything. I'm going to click on create repo. So this created the repository for me. As you can see, we have all these guys right here. Just leave them, leave it the way it is. Then come back to your VS code and right inside the root folder here, you want to create a file and you want to call it dot git ignore. So what the dot git ignore does is we want to push all these projects we want to push it to our github first then from github it's going to go to either netlify or visual but then you notice there's this folder right here that is node modules with a lot of folders we don't really need this so the git ignore file is used to exclude some file from getting pushed or getting commits so i'm going to come to git ignore and i want to exclude the node modules i'm just going to type in node modules the name of the folder and that's all i'm just going to save and i'm going to close that so the next thing i want to do now is i want to go ahead to initialize the git i want to initialize the project so i'm just going to come here and i'm going to type git in it and this is going to initialize the project as you can see we have a u in front of all these guys that means they are yet to be added they are yet to be committed so i'm going to do git add dot so the git add dot means I want to, you know, add all the projects to a branch, to a staging area. I mean, you want to add, add everything to a staging area. I'm going to click on enter. And this, as you can see, the letters change to A. It has been added to a staging area. If I should do git status, as you can see, we have all these guys right here. Changes to be committed. These guys are yet to be committed so we need to commit them so i'm going to do git commit m and i'm just going to leave a comment right here and call this initial commit like this so you're going to do git commit as you can see we are yet to commit all these projects so i want to commit them now and i'm going to click on enter and they'll be committed if i should do git status as you can see there's nothing to commit again everything has been committed now that we've committed it we've moved it to staging area and we've committed it the next thing we want to do now is we want to push it to github so come back to your github account 
right here and from here we're going to be copying some codes so copy this code right here git remote add origin right here copy it come back right here paste it make sure you are connected to the internet with a good internet connection and basically click on enter that is done come back right here as well to copy the git branch dash m dash main i'm going to paste it click on enter and come back right here to copy the git push um dash u origin main this one this time around i want to push it to git up now so i'm going to paste i'm going to click on enter and this is going to might take some seconds depending on the speed of your internet so this is going to push to your github account as you can see i am yet to sign in so it is prompting me to sign in if you are signed in already it is going to push it directly but mine i'll need to sign it so i'm just going to go ahead to click on sign in with your browser let's click on that and this is going to authenticate because i'm logged in right here as you can see it is asking for authorization so i'm going to click on authorize and we are going to wait for this to finish up as you can see this is pushing to get up now you can see the percentage you can see everything going on and it has been pushed so if i should come back right here to my github account if i should come back to personal sites as you can see everything is now here if you, if you check this we have the build folder inside the build folder we have our css images pages index.html if i should come back to personal sites as you can see we have the git ignore input css and everything right here but we don't have the node modules there that is because we excluded it using the git ignore so now that we've done that and we have everything set the next thing is to connect it to either netlify or to vsell to to deploy the website right there so i'm going to come to my netlify account i'm logged in and i'm going to click on import from git so right here we are going to go with github because we just uploaded our website to github i'm going to click on github and that is going to prompt you to authorize you can go ahead to click on authorize or it authorize automatically by itself if, if you've given it authorization before so right here as you can see we have my website right here the personal site i'm going to click on that and i'm going to deploy to deploy it i'm going to leave this the way it is and for this one i'm going to leave it as well but for this i'm going to change the folder so right here you notice my main um file my main html file is inside a build folder so as you can see and to do that i have to specify the path so i'm just going to do build you can do this you can do build and just go ahead to click on deploy site so while that is loading we're going to come to netlify and for netfast as well if i should come to my main account right here as you can see there's no project right here if i should click on create a new project before now when you are creating your account you get a prompt to connect to github so once you do that you are going to start seeing your github repo inside this cell as you can see we have the personal site right here i'm going to click on import so i'm going to leave it at personal site framework preset you don't need any framework i'm just going to leave it the way it is the root directory so we want to set our root directory i'm going to click on edit so the root directory is going to be my build folder as you can see not if if my index.html is directly inside this folder right here directly here we don't need a public directory but because it is inside another folder i'm just going to select build i'm going to click on continue and once you have all that set you can just go ahead to click on deploy still waiting for this to load and this as well is going to take some seconds to fully deploy from github so once everything is done we're going to see our website live as you can see our website has now been deployed to vsell as you can see right here so if i click on you can decide to add a domain let's assume you built a personal portfolio website for yourself you can decide to add a domain buy a domain and connect it right here for free you don't have to pay for hosting or anything i'm just going to click on continue to dashboard and we have the site right here i'm going to copy this link this is the deployment link and this is the domain so if i should copy this link or just click on it it is going to open in another tab and as you can see we have our website right here hosted for free on vsell so if i should inspect it it is going to display well as well everything is working fine perfectly fine as you can see right here everything is working fine 
and um, this is looking cool i just deployed from vs code to get up from get up to vcell and this is working perfectly fine so i can go ahead to just close these guys and we're going to wait for this to finish deploying the um, netlify and once it is done we're going to come back to check it out as well so as you can see our website has been fully deployed on netlify as well so if you have a domain name you want to connect, you can go ahead to set up a domain name. But this tutorial is not for that. This is just to show you how to deploy from VS Code through GitHub to VCL or Netlify. So in case you are having a continuous spin right here for a long period of time, you can always click on it and it's going to show you the progress or you just come to site settings. It's going to show you the progress down here. So most times it will have deployed, but then it will still be um, spinning. So now that we have it deployed, I can come to my main website right here. I go to see the website right here. I can click on this. It is going to open this up again for me. And I can click on this link right here. And this will take me to the website. As you can see, I just deployed to Netlify as well. This is Netlify and we have the one for VCL. But as you can see, this is looking cool. You can go, I can go ahead to add a domain name. It's going to be free. Of course, you have to buy your domain name, but then connecting it and setting everything up is going to be free. It is easy and it is straight forward. So that will be all about how to deploy your website with either CPanel, Netlify or VCL.